football season. Yeah. So all that nice ass shit, man, fuck all that. Yeah. He says Snoop gets paid 500K a day. Snoop Doggy. Dog. Oh, oh. Snoop Dogg. And I know this is your story, but I have to give you your flowers. Huh? Peggy, appreciate the flowers. Thank you. But nobody needs. <laughs> And whether he knew he was playing me or not, that should never have came out your mouth. He shouldn't be able to play no more. Suspended. No allows. He ended up walking away with the gold, mm. all right? The motherfuckers was moving now. They were moving now. Moving Kind of reminded me something about myself. Oh, really? Shit. Hey, Julius Peppers, man. Let's see what he had to say. That's the biggest human being I've ever seen in my life. Like, if this motherfucker get mad, who gonna stop him? Not me. Cam Newton is and should be without a doubt a Hall of Fame NFL player. No matter what the people say, I'ma love you anyway. I, I want mind. my jacket. Come on, man. Give it to me anyway so I can put it with a hat. Hey, hey. defense, all right. Hey, defense. Tark Jack's team ready. Hey. Governor West. West, hey. Cam Newton, hey. Oh, shit. Alright, pay. Hands up. Nobody give a f about them p sad degrees, mother. Skip just wrapped up his last episode of Undisputed FS1. We gotta give Skip some type of flowers up his last day. What your mama say, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Next clip. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think uh -huh. me and Skip? can do better numbers than Stephen A and Shannon Sharp. Skipper, consider it. What Olympic sport you'd have the best chance to place gold in? What's your thoughts on the current landscape of college football with NIL and the oh. portal? Would you ever consider creating an e-sports organization? He said if today's Cam Newton could talk to young Cam Newton, what would you tell him? You're right. Mm. I would tell my younger self, you're right. I'm in Newton's Law. Rookie, newcomer, freshman. These are five things you need to understand as you're going into a new phase of your life. Rule number one. All right. Shut the f up and work. Coming to you live in three, mm. two, mm. one. Yeah. Action. Welcome to fourth and one. Well, I always got it done. Uh -huh. Bringing facts about a ton okay. for the rising of the sun. Welcome to Fourth and One. <laughs> Super smooth, eh? Super smooth, eh? Come on. I said, Welcome to Fourth and One. Uh -huh. Well, I always got it done. Okay. Welcome to Fourth and One. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. 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 Gotta go yeah. beat a little bit. Okay. okay now, Welcome to Fourth and One. Uh -huh. Way out. Welcome to Fourth and One. Okay. Hey. 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 No, okay, no, okay, okay, okay. I'm working over at the one. Uh -huh. Well, I always got it done. Okay. Bring a fax by the ton for the rising of the sun. Oh, say what? This ain't me in the shotgun. Ah. <clears throat> Newton drops <clears throat> back. <clears throat> yeah. Ooh. This is me in front of TV. Okay, 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 hey. okay, okay, okay. Hey, me in front of TV. All right. Hey, all right. Hey. All right. hey, me in front of TV. Me in front of your TV. Uh -huh. Me in front of your TV having a hole. Huh? Me, 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 me in front of your TV. TV. <laughs> <laughs> me in front of your TV <laughs> having a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Mm. I'm gonna tell y'all one thing, cause look, I was about to stop doing that, but listen, I called my dog DJ Moore. DJ Moore called me and he recited the whole intro. Stop lying, boo. Oh my soul. Woo! Yeah. So this is me and French and TV. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> me and French and TV having a home lot of fun. Hey man, before we get started, I must admonish you to do this one thing. Well, a couple things, but pretending to one thing. You dig what I'm saying? Make sure you become an icon today. Make sure you go to iconicsaga.com and become an icon today. That's a dollar a month. Mm -hmm. It's simple. Ad free content, exclusive content. I mean, exclusive giveaways. I mean, what else do you want? I mean, it makes sense. Come an icon today, and while you at it, <laughs> make sure you like, share, comment. But most of all, Peggy, what should they do? Subscribe. Make now. sure you like, share, and comment. 
But most of all, what should you do? Subscribe, Make y'all. sure you like, share, comment. But what's the most important thing that you do? Subscribe, y'all. What are we doing? We're in a trap house today, y'all. Okay. This is a hot. Okay, it's muggy. They said bug. Where Peggy at? I said, man, we hot right now, man. Oh. We doing numbers like we being pushed by a, a major platform, but it's coming though. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but it's coming though. Oh my goodness. Okay. Is you ready, Peggy? I'm ready, Boogie. Is you ready, Peggy? I'm ready, Boogie. I said, is you ready, Peggy? I'm ready, Boogie. What the hell you got on my screen right here, man? What this here? What that is? Talk and we me. talking about Fanatic Spence. Yeah. New York City, Boogie, yeah, August yeah. 16th. Okay. Come on, now it's coming to you live. Live? Live and direct, coming at your neck. Peggy? And Boogie? Like, you gonna be shy? Nah, I ain't gonna be shy, Boogie. See this, you know what I'm saying? I've been trying to get get it together. I'm like, hold on, cause I already know Boog. Yeah. He gonna perform now. Yeah. You do it in front of thousands, yeah. millions, Come you know on, what I'm saying? Come on, man, but I'm about to slide out. So check this out. You heard it from the man himself. The one and only Peggy. You dig it up. Friday, August 16th, live from Fanatics Fan Fest at 6 p.m. Want to get tickets? Go to fanaticsfest.com to purchase tickets and use the code CAM20. What they ain't, what? What? <laughs> but I mean, that ain't got no symmetry to. It don't go. Yeah. It don't matter what shit. It, it is what it is. Go to Fan Fest. Hold up, bro. Hold up. Fanatics. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, we gonna be that. Matter of fact, this is what I need from the people. Who the hell came up with this code? Dude, that just made me. Like, what Maybe is they this? They might be doing it in orders of they like John number one, this person number two. No, nah, hell no, nah, Peggy. We gotta get some straight. We gotta get. But some it's all right though, because we still gonna you know be there. Man, make sure y'all go to fanaticsfest.com, purchase your tickets, and use Cam Twenty. That's the code. I don't know why they use Cam Twenty because. God, it is what it is. So this is valid until August 12th at midnight Eastern time. It's all right, it's cool, but I'm like. <laughs> that don't go with the. Anyway, we'll be that Peggy. Yeah, we'll, we'll turn it out, you dig it. Up. Here we go, first down, viral moment of the week. What we got? And that boy Snoop Dogg. Dogg. Yo, Snoop Dogg. so Henry. Mick Mara said, he tweeted, he said, sat next to an NBC exec at dinner. He said, Snoop gets paid 500K a day, plus expenses to be promoting the Olympics. From gin and juice to a few million to be a celebrity at the Olympics. What in the world? Snoop Dogg, get into that money. Snoop Dogg, get Dogg. Snoop Dogg. I just said it the other week, bro. Like, we done seen this man level up. And y'all want me to change? Mm. This man right here give me all the type of validation and things that I need to know in my life. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? But y'all want me to change? Don't change, Man, y'all sitting up here, this, I don't give a damn if it's true or not. Mm -hmm. I, I'm making it true. Mm. He making $500,000 a day, and y'all want me to take a pay cut? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> No, 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 no. Like, yes, bro, I love this. Yeah. I love this. This man has did it his way. You Facts. feel me? Facts. Ain't, ain't bend the knee, ain't cowered out, ain't say, you know what, I'm going to do this this way, nephew, so I can, nah, he's always been for shizzle, my nephew. Oh, my goodness, yeah. And, and, and it's been like, damn. Yeah, he did it all. He came from Derrick Rose collecting dead presidents. Damn. Yeah. Love that, man. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. major shout out to Snoop Dogg, man. Keep going. Because you're wide. empowering and impacting and inspiring niggas like me. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you did. Here we go. Peggy! What's good, boo? Yeah. You know, when you get, yeah, for, for the church folks, I mean, for the church folks that be in that, well, you know, when you at the altar uh -huh. and that spirit just, <laughs> Peggy! What's good, boo? Yeah! <laughs> Let him use you. Let him use you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why y'all use each other. <laughs>
<laughs> Not the one dagger. <laughs> you can't tell Man, me. listen. Folks been spamming my stream. They been talking about where Peggy at. Man, I'm gonna jump out down that stream. You know man. what I'm saying? They hit me with the Peggy. It's like. <laughs> Bro, I mean, bro it, it's just love, man. Yeah. It's love, man. I've been, I've really been enjoying this content creating stuff because, like, a person may ask why. It's like, think about it. Not a lot of football players have faces. That's true. But, bro, hold on. We got to circle. We got to circle that back, though. I got to give you, and it's not just because of me when you said that, and I know this is your story, but I have to give you your flowers About on what? that. The football players having faces. Years ago, you've been on this. Mm -hmm. Pushing Iconic Saga. I want a production company. I'm gonna do it this way. And everybody has something to say. Close, far away, like, bro, you're doing too much. That don't make sense. Can't walking around with people with cameras and everything. But you always wanted to do it your way. You always was a trailblazer. Yeah. And even though you might have got crucified for it at certain times, you just kept going. And so I got to give you a flowers because a lot of people, but they ain't like that. And you know what I'm saying? So I, I got to show you love in front of everybody because you've been about this. And your face deserved to, deserved to be seen, brother, because you done, you done laid the groundwork. Man, my mafia, motherfucking child, man. God damn it. My, my, my mafia. Yeah. Shit. Got to. Yeah, bro, I really, because let me tell you something. The reason why I feel so, like, I stand on business in regards to content, because first off, content is king, mm -hmm. right? If it wasn't king, media rights, why is that so expensive? That's true. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, in regards to me, I never gave a damn, never gave a fuck, never cared about what you had to say about me. Yeah, yeah, Let's just, yeah. look. I ain't got all the money, but I got some money, so you can keep your little two cents. That ain't paying for nothing. It ain't paying child support. It ain't paying no tuition. It ain't paying for my dinner, my breakfast, lunch, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the damn show ain't paying for my clothes. Talk to him, bud. Now, with that being said, uh -huh. Peggy. What's up, bud? Appreciate the flowers. Thank you. But nigga, I didn't need it. <laughs> I'm gonna throw rocks at you next time, nigga. And I'm gonna throw them back. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna tell you this, Peggy. What's up, boo? Even though you took your time and you plucked out your little daisies and your weeds and your dandelions and your roses and your tulips. <laughs> roses it's still really smell really like boo, 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 boo. Yeah. yeah, like, come on, man. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Cause this is the thing. They don't want you to know what you what you need to know. Oh, that's what like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Say what 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 what, 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 what was it? Uh-huh. You trying to do what? And I'm like, okay, cool. If y'all doing it like this, I'm a fan of so many different shows, so many different networks, so many different, you know, pieces of production. So I'm like, man, they missing something though. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing that, like I say, baby boomers. Millennials, Gen Z, they, it's like a voice box that they sometimes miss. Mm -hmm. And it's authenticity. So for yeah. me, I'm sitting up there saying like, even though it may come out crazy where like, hey, man, y'all stop all that cursing and this. <laughs> but I remember watching Dear Mama, uh -huh. Tupac documentary. Gotcha. And I don't think it's the words more than the intentions behind the words mm. that should go into consideration. Because a lot of times people lose full control of what they're trying to say, but that doesn't mean they lose the control of what they're trying to get across. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get you. Man, he went into this church mm -hmm. and was cursing. Man, motherfuckers, is this, that, and third. And like, man, we got to do this and we got to do that. Not granted. I come from a church, <laughs> Pentecostal. You get slapped whoa, 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 whoa. You know, it's, but the message, and real. you can't fault the messenger when he has a beautiful message. Yeah. Sometimes it comes out, you know, I come out. Yeah. So 
That's my thing, Peggy. I just use this platform that y'all beautiful people at Iconic Side Gun gave me. Y'all believed in a little bit of me, and I believed in tiny y'all. <laughs> no, not tiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can, I can talk about Peggy. We'll get some straightening going yeah, It's on. okay. It's all right. But I really enjoy what I do, man, and I, I enjoy it because people, they look at it, and they're like, yo, Cam funny. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nigga, <laughs> I'm just being me. Being uniquely you. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, Piggy, I mean, I'm sorry for just holding up your time. <laughs> I mean, God, so oh, my we man. got a damn we show. We got to give run. people the show now. Here we go. Next clip, damn it. But since you got all these words, man, oh, bring my some people goodness. together. Mm. Nah, I want double. See, in order to play me, you got to have double because, you know what I'm saying, when I go crazy, I was in a dog fight. Just got a bit stopped. Mm. After this game. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that boy, man. That boy, man. That boy, man. <laughs> But the fact that you can still smile through that, bro, that boy got so mad, bro. Oh my God, did you hear that? <laughs> now this is what I would say to this. I believe in having passion and I believe in, you know, shit talking. Yeah. But one thing about me, I'm not gonna say nothing away from you that I wouldn't say face to face to you. Mm -hmm. And I expect that same type of respect. Yeah. Uh, old boy who I was playing, I wouldn't be laughing if he said that. Shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. And whether he knew I was playing, he was playing me or not, that shouldn't even matter. That should never have came out your mouth. That's facts. So he's like, oh my God, I didn't know I was playing Cam Newton. What the fuck does that mean? Care. That's just how you feel about my race. That's how home. you just feel as a and people. So so they ask, okay, Cam, what would you expect it, them to do? Cool. If you have documentation, it should go to a board. We got we living in a country full of accountability, right? That's true. He shouldn't be able to play no more. Suspend it. Mm. And then a whole nother level of security. Every single person should. That's how you get blue checks, though. But you got a, a photo ID. Like all this, so you can't start a whole nother, uh, you can't start another channel, you can't start another thing without giving a proper license. Yeah. State ID, something. And you say, well, what about the kids? Kids got state IDs. <clears throat> My sons, in order for them to play in their football league, they okay. have to have a state ID. Wow. That's, how, that's the only way you're no, because you need a social security number. You you need a uh, birth, birth certificate. certificate. Yeah. And that's how you get your state ID. Yeah. So with that, it's like, all right, what about the young kids? Cool. They can still get their own yeah. thing. Uh, ID, yeah. You know what I mean? But that's that's disgusting just to, like, it was first off. How did he even get first to First off, it's not even, he wasn't talking the whole game, Peggy. Just mad and just. He wasn't yeah, talking. Sure. And the crazy thing is, his gamer tag was like the Ole Miss something. Uh-huh. I'm like, why are you playing with Alabama? This dude had Ole Miss something. Playing with Alabama. You ain't no fan. Mm. You lost with the best team on the game. Yeah. What does that say about you? Mm -hmm. So you getting mad. Big mad. And then went out in a bad way. That's how you get your chat mafia right there. You Man. might get your house mafia right yeah, there. Yeah, but that that yeah. don't hey. I say all that to say this. It's like we have to start prioritizing, like, the right thing. And am I using my platform to do anything other than shed light to – racism still exists. Yeah. But if he's playing a video game and, and he gets out. scored on, something that's harmless and completely it's, – it's nothing that's impacting – we didn't bet no money. Yeah. It's 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 fake. It's fake, yeah. So for him to just Ah nigga yeah. What? He didn't even say the A, he said the ER. 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 It didn't matter if he just it said, said P N I G. I -G. Yeah. 
Like yeah. the fuck? Like let's stop giving passes. Passes, yeah, life. all of it ain't. We ain't going for none of it. Ain't not here, no. But yeah. that is where I'm at with yeah. it. It's like, yo, we let's start exposing these motherfuckers. Yeah. Cut your camera on. Like, uh, let's start exposing them because, boom, I guarantee if I could click that profile and his where he's from comes up and who his actual name is, mm. hey, man, uh, Jacob Dunn, that's in Tupelo, Mississippi. Hey, I don't know what he do. Don't care what he do. But every nigga that's around <laughs> him, he don't like us. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He done called it. I done said what I had to say. Next clip. Mafia the chat, man. Mafia. All right, we got the Olympics. But uh, no allows. He ended up walking away with the gold. All mm. right. So it was a photo finish. Yeah. And it was a little, you know, a little touchy because it was like, did he win? He even thought he lost. Um, no, so, he didn't. Yes, he did. No, At he first didn't. He did. Yep. No, he didn't. Yep. He did not think he lost. The announcer thought he lost. Bro, Noah the went announcer over. had Bro. an epic fail. <clears throat> Noah walked over to the guy from Jamaica and said, bro, I think you got it. And then the photo came out. So for those that are confused as why Noah Lyles was awarded a gold medal instead of Kashane Thomas, even though Thomas Thompson's, I'm sorry, instead of Thomas Thompson's foot crossed the line first, the clock stops when your torso crosses the line first. Now his foot went across first, but Noah's torso went across first, and that's when it officially counts that he won. Noah Lyles even came up to him and said, hey, I think you got it. He looks up at the screen and realizes, oh, snap. Oh, snap. It's me. It's me. That's what happened. So what do you think, book? I don't give a damn about a tenth of a second. Both of their asses is fast. It's a half of a second. Yep. A, 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 a tenth of a second. Okay. A second. Okay. Right? The reality is this. I ain't coming here to tell you or to school you about how many seconds, a thousandth of a whatever, that whatever, that whatever. Yeah. The motherfuckers was moving. Now. They were moving now. You dig it up, they saying? They were moving. Kind of reminded me some about myself. Oh, really? Shit. Yes, sir. Oh, we're going to have to find, find your film then, brother. It's like, you ain't going to find it. It's going to be like, <laughs> shit, we talked about it last week. There you go. <laughs> right there. You would have been shorter than that. I've always been looking at Noah Lyles, and I'm saying to myself, why the hell... This guy has the weakest start, but bruh, all his right, bro. If you just do a compilation of his his wins, his power within the first twenty to thirty meters, that pickup time is something that I've never seen. Cause he, okay, his top speed is just he yeah. started. I, there was a there was a there was a clip where it had like. Every meter, mm -hmm. it was like the tenth meter. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Ten meters, sec, uh, twenty meter, thirty meter, forty meter, that meter, right? Noah Lyle started eighth. Uh -huh. Thompson started first or second, or maybe third. Each frame or each meter. Yeah, I see the frame by frame. He yeah. was still like second. Up, yeah. No, this is Tom uh, Thompson. Okay. Right, he's still second. Then he stayed at first. Meanwhile, every frame or no allows, bro, he went from eighth to t to sixth to fourth to third and right at the last meter first. That boy, that boy bro, something different. Huh? I be looking at that shit and I be saying to myself, like, God almighty, what muscles, like, <laughs> can you train to move that, that fast? fast? Yeah, he, he was moving, bro. And his personality – it's so over the top. Like, it's so bold. You know what I'm saying? It ain't bold. It should yeah. be you. That's what I'm saying, which is so good, because you don't really get to see that. You just, like, people come to Why races, not? They be so stern or strict. He just, like, big personality is great. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it, it's good to see that, too, because the first few races, even in the semifinals, like, he, he, he came in second. And then it was like, look, I'm about to, this the last race. I'm about to take care of my business. So he took care of his business, but on the woman's side, Shikari, mm -hmm. Shakiri, I'm sorry, Shakiri Richardson, she got silver, um, and so that was a little different. She lost to uh, my girl from St. Lucia. Yeah, what the hell? She, she came, came out from? the blocks a little too late too. Like her start wasn't good. That's a big ass chick. Who? She looked. She reminded me of Usain Bolt of a woman version Bruh, type. I was looking. Stride. I was like, damn. 
who is that? Yeah. She like, bitch, she one of them chicks that don't <laughs> fuck with her. Hey! Straight up, that is a story. Peggy said it. Ha <laughs> ha! She said. She just snapped my little ass up, boy. I mean, snap. <laughs> tell the people about you being under the bed one time, Peggy. Man, but look, I can't even. <laughs> but you got a bow. That sounds, that sounds real suspect. Nah, bro, that's not me. It's like, It bro, wasn't mine, but it, yeah, it wasn't It wasn't yeah. under my bed. Yeah, it facts. It was under a bed. You told me the story about you being under a bed. Hiding uh-huh. from a female. Bruh, like you, was, Macaulay Culkin. She was a heavy setter, bro. It don't matter. Bruh, but stay, stay, stay on topic. Bro. Yeah, stay on topics, man. Well, hats off to everybody. Look, she the second fastest woman in the world. In the world. He the number one fastest man. It's, yeah. they, they moving fast. I love to see it, man. They did their thing. I, I love seeing it. And then it, they had a beautiful interaction with, um, I think it was this year's Olympics or whenever, where like Jamaica and her, like some of the um, – contestants was was talking to Shakari and it was like damn like this is what it's all about you know there's there's respect there's competition it's competitive but we still fuck with each other you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying and yeah that's that's what you love to see so but how is that from an athlete book like you competing with somebody but then I guess I don't know on the, on the athlete side it's like you know the struggles. You know the work you put to get yeah. to this moment. Like, how is that? It's sportsmanship. Uh-huh. You know. I, man, when you think about it, the sportsmanship, like, is something that you say to yourself. It's like, it's so many different factors into what goes into me winning and or even playing. The competitiveness wants you to win. The sportsmanship just wants you to appreciate the opportunity. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's it's tough because I've I've been fans of people who I've played against, but while I was playing them, it was like it was fuck them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that don't mean I don't respect them, but while we playing, that's it. Fuck you. That's just how. That's Never just how. Damn about. Man, look, that's how I was raised, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't give a damn if it was my brother or my dad. Like, if we're competing, it's fuck yeah. Uh-huh. It, it, that's too strong. It's just a game, no, nah, baby. But if this game is paying our bills, yeah, <laughs> a life on the line. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You better ask somebody, <laughs> cause it's fuck yeah. <laughs> you don't get funny about your money. You no, know, don't do that. Don't play with mine. <laughs> Don't come with me, Penny Pigeon. <laughs> Don't do that. We can't do that. Here we go. Next clip. Your boy Tyreek Hill voted number one by NFL peers. Let's check out the video. His reaction. Yeah. 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 Just want to say on behalf of NFL players, want to congratulate you on being voted number one. You lie. No, you lie. Hey, hey, hey. Why you lie, boy? Hey. What I said my rookie year, huh? <laughs> what I said my rookie year, huh? Get me turned up, man. Let me call my mama, yeah. bro. Man, hold on, bro. That's a real, Why she not mama. answer, bro? Hey. Why she not answer? Why for the pass out, bro? Oh my God, this is so real, bro. Hello. Mom, guess what, bro? What is it, bro? Guess who number one in the NFL? Guess who got voted number one by his peers? In the NFL. Tyreek Hill. Tyreek mother trucking Hill, baby. It's been a long time coming. I said I was going to get this since I was a rookie, bro. I told Tom Brady that, too. I belong number one over Tom Brady. Tom Brady, I'm calling you out. I'm number one. Cheetah. This is the first time a receiver ever did this, too, now that I'm thinking about it, man. Yeah. Right? Yeah, first time ever. Right? I think I'm soldier boy at this point, bro. <laughs> I think I'm soldier boy at this point, bro. Not big soldier. So, Boog, yeah. do you agree with the list? So, you got Tyreek Hill, one. Yep. Lamar, number two. Yep. CMC, number mm-hmm. three. Mahomes, four. Mm-hmm. Miles Garrett, five. Chris Jones, six. Trent Williams, seven. TJ Watt, eight. Travis Kelsey nine and Max Crosby ten. Mm. What you think about this list? Should he be number one? Should anybody feel disrespected? No. 
Bro, that's a solid list right there. That's solid. Yeah, Tyreek Hill is the most dangerous man in the NFL. Yeah. What? How do you play? Like, the person who should be so grateful, mm -hmm. so grateful for Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. Mm, oh. Now break that down, though. Okay. Bring out your notebooks. Okay. So, it's simple. You cannot cover a man like Tyreek Hill with one person. Mm. So, therefore, he's going to take two people. Yeah. And when I mean doubling a person, it's not necessarily always meaning two people are solely dedicated to one person. It's more or less to say we're cloud the coverage towards him. What I mean by cloud is there's a person – that plays underneath and there's a person that is that's going to play over the top okay so they're clouding him typical um understanding would be like a cover two All right. right like you got a corner in the flats then you got a safety over the top but that's how they will have to play that's how they have always played Tyreek Hill so even though like there's not a person that's just running with him the whole time there's times that he is he's being tracked and monitored by, by two thing. people okay now mm -hmm. with a strong run game then you have to bring a guy in the box That's right true. yeah so leave somebody <sighs> hello you know they ain't got enough people to to contend the run uh -huh. right to stop Tyreek Hill, uh -huh. so you know it's only going to be one person that's going to be on me, Jalen Waddle. And then now you done added Odell in there. God, so much. Man, listen. It's got to be against the You Lava. know you're going to have one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. It's almost like Joel and B in the paint. Uh-huh. Imano, Imano. Like it's Shaquille O'Neal. Mm, yeah, that's a, yeah. Like, you know he has to get double teed. Yeah. Like, straight up. Handle right. your business. Going for what you know. And then that's what usually happens. Whatever the brain they lunch pill. And they them. still can't stop the motherfucker. They still can't. You can't back up far enough. <laughs> you can't. Son, move up. Who? You're 35 yards. Shit. I said, move up. I said, shit. <laughs> I said, shit. Did you, did you see number 10 over there? That little swallow up Bruh, hamster. He, that <laughs> motherfucker feet be moving a mile a minute. Bruh, he like Sonic for real. Like real shit, bro. You love to see it, but damn. Yeah. Yeah, he's supposed to be number one. That's what's up. That's Most up. dangerous player in the NFL right now. For sure. Yeah. Shout out to Tyreek, bro. We got to get some content in. So. Come on, yeah, I know, Tyreek. I know you just got busy. But we'll figure it out. I like his, his cleats, too, that he be wearing. Right. Here we go, next clip. Well, I'm talking about Tyreek, but we also got to talk about people that was getting their gold jacket. Frasia! Big Julius Peppers, man. Let's yeah. see what he had to say. While I'm talking about Chapel Hill and North Carolina, and I know this is the Pro, Pro Football Hall of Fame, I ain't going to sit up here and act like my idol and one of the reasons that I went to Chapel Hill is not in the building. The GOAT, his airness, Michael Jordan. MJ, I want to thank you for the inspiration and the memories. Love you, big bro. So Michael Jordan came. He came to support Dwight Freeney, but also, I mean, obviously everybody else there. He was Dwight mm -hmm. Freeney's guest. But this is, you know, more about Julius Peppers, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so... What you got to say to Julius, bro? Obviously, y'all played together. Man, Frazier, man. I, you know how crazy the universe is, bro? Yeah. I played with every single living Panther legend. Word. Think about that. Break them down. Give me, give me who you When you at. think about the Mount Rushmore. You got your Sam Mills. That's the only one I ain't played with. Mm. Keep going. Luke. Okay. TD. Okay. Julius Peppers. Okay. Steve Smith. Okay. Um, my man Walls. Frank in, Walsh. Yeah, no, Walls. Uh, uh, tight end. No. Yeah, no. But, yeah, but, but, uh, but Mount Rushmore. See. Gross. Um, Khalil, I would, he would be in there. Obviously, you ain't played with DeLone. 
D'Angelo. Oh yeah, D'Angelo. Jonathan Stewart. Jonathan Stewart. Charles Johnson. Yeah. Thomas Davis. Thomas Davis. I, played Mike, with I would all. throw Mike Mentor in there. But yeah, I you played, played with everybody, everybody who I wanted to play with, I you played, played with. with during that time. I played with. Yeah. Give me what is, where does Frazier come from? Because you never call nobody by their name. What, why why you you call him Frazier? That's his middle name. Okay. How did you find that out? You just Googled it? Yo, 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 yo. Anybody who knows <laughs> Julius Pepper, he's always whispering. Yeah. And he always covering his mouth like he a damn a mobster or some <laughs> shit, bro. But a big like he always dude. Hey, 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 bro. You know if we got practice today? <laughs> like, what? No, 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 no. Come here, come here, come here, come here. What time meetings? <laughs> like, we got meetings right now. Oh, 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 oh. You straight, though? Like nigga, put your hand in. Then your... nigga, you all the way, bruh. What the fuck are bruh, you doing? Yes, bro. Bro, like, he's he... six. That's the biggest human being I've ever seen in my life. And if Cam say he's a big human being, no, like he's a big, big ass human human being. Yes, it, it, it's it, okay. And I say this, he's just put together that I've never seen a person, and I'm saying this as a masculine male. Yeah. You don't rarely see a person who has just the amount of arms yeah. as they have legs. Yeah. And just everything is just like, when you're, you're looking like action across figure. from him, and this motherfucker got the darkest presidential <laughs> tint, 5% tint, <laughs> visor. Thanks. <laughs> hey, check, check, easy. Hey, block this motherfucker right here. Matter of fact, hey, you too. Slide over here. Bruh, I know you was glad y'all was teammates, boy. Real shit. I played against him too. Oh, yeah, when he went Chicago. to Chicago. Oh, Chicago, okay, Chicago. okay. Yeah, bruh. Matter did of you, fact, did he, he tried to you? sell me his damn place when I first moved to Charlotte. Damn. But damn. it was, man, Frazier's a person, man. And, you know, you got to be, you got to, I always come correct in regards to, you know, nicknames. But, you know, he was just so quiet, man. Yeah. And just like, Took, took to himself, very artistic. People don't understand that. Big in the music, uh, um, was the art things like that, yeah. man. He and, was, he was, yeah, he was deep though. You know, poetry, yeah. stuff, and it was like, yo, like, yeah, man. You know, <laughs> tell me what you think. Like he was always with. It's hard to explain, <laughs> but you would think easy. Like there's certain people that come across you in your lifetime that you have to just say like, if this motherfucker get mad, bro, who gonna stop him? Not I. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Shit. It's gonna be a bunch of ooh wee. Okay. <laughs> You gotta go. You gotta motherfucking go. Hey, hey, hey. easy, easy. Because if you see fella. motherfucking number 90 for the Carolina Panthers, mm, disruptive. He played, it's just like two different people. On the field, you like, I'm nervous. Off the field, he's the most calmest, yeah. nicest person. Hey, 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 uh, 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 got this deep ass voice, God. too. Bro. Baritone ass yeah. voice. Tenor ass boys. I said, bro, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> and just like when you give him dap, bro, bro, like his his fingers hit your wrist. Like, hold on, what's up, bro? God dang. But cool as fuck, man. So, man, Frazier, congratulations on getting your gold jacket, my brother. Um, so much to just be proud of over your career, but one of the main things that I know is important is his family too. Mm. He does right by his family. Every yeah. time he posts something on Instagram or something like, and even around the facilities or at the games, like his family is there, his kids running around, man. And it's something that is, I know is true and dear to him. So man, um, Julius Peppers is obviously a person who I've looked up to for so long. And I was just lucky enough to be able to call him my teammate. So That's solid, man. Yeah. Peppers is a good dude, man. Yeah. I was just think him. He hit me up to make his retirement speech. Oh, that hurt me, and, uh, man. No, man. That I, hurt me. I made me. it. While we were shooting it, it was just me and him. He was like, man, I don't need nobody around. I'm going to just make it, shoot it. And we, you I did shot, that, yeah, baby? I shot it. When he was walking out of the thing? We, he sat down at a table. We were at a hotel here in Atlanta. And we did it in a room in a hotel here. And he was down here, and we shot it. I mic'd him up, and we did it. That's when he posted it and said he retired. So. It was good. Who shot it? Like the I shot it and then I edited it. Yeah. Peggy. Yeah. Why you was gonna tell me that? 
Bruh, man, me, but Pep was a, man, that's my guy. He cool. Pep. Oh, now nah, yeah. all of a sudden everybody got nah, Pep Pep's story. Pep story, huh? Yeah, nah, shit. Well, up. why you weren't at the damn ceremony then, Piggy? Yeah, you, know. you was sitting next to me. Yeah, I ain't see you next to motherfucking Michael Jordan. <laughs> you ain't nobody. You <laughs> just was a contractor for the damn thing. Over here talking about, yeah, Pep, my boy. That nigga don't what? know you, man. <laughs> man, pep. speaking of all the stuff, man, speaking of the Panthers. In the Hall of Fame, Luke Keekley amongst a lot of others, but he's a Panther in the 2025 ballot of the Hall of Fame. We got Eli coming up, Terrell Suggs, Marshawn Lynch, Earl Thomas, Aqib Tlaib, Adam Vinatieri, obviously Luke, and Marshall Yanda. Somebody just tweeted out. I'm just saying, this is what the people saying, Cam. This ain't what I'm saying. This is what the people saying. A viral tweet went out over this weekend. Um, Cam Newton is and should be without a doubt a Hall of Fame NFL player. So, I mean, I know you can't vote yourself, but just what the people say. No matter what the people say. I'm going to love you anyway. I want my jacket. Come on now. Give it to me anyway so I can put it with a hat. Hey. And you know I'm like that. Hey. You scratch my back, I scratch this too. You already know to do. Give me my shit. Hey. Come on now, bro. Give me my jacket. Hey! <laughs> Come on now. But now, am I up? I mean, No, they say that. Oh, you got to retire. Die first. Ah! <laughs> you got to make your official speech. <laughs> Boy, y'all. Don't let RJ see this, y'all. Oh Don't let God. RJ see this. Look, he's just going to give me the big ass eyes. What you going to do? Here, make the speech. <laughs> RJ, chief of staff. You know. Here we go. Second down. Questionable call of the week. Let's see what we got. All right. Now, if you're going to do the Olympics, you might need to be down with Nike. Now, anyone who's ever played basketball and taken these team photos knows the tallest players go to the back. But Tyrese Halliburton is taller than Anthony Edwards. The reason Ant is in the back is because he's an Adidas athlete and they do not want his signature shoe to be on display. If you don't believe me, fine, check this out. Once again, all non night sponsored players are standing in the back. But here's the smoking gun. Every player in this photo was Nike except Dwight Howard. Now look at where Coach K is sitting and tell me with a straight face that isn't deliberate. So now that we've established that there is a clear Nike agenda in regards to the USA basketball team, we can talk about how this pertains to Kyrie Irving and Jalen Brown. Neither of them are Nike athletes, but we know that you don't have to be Nike to play for USA. What we do know is both players used to play for Team USA, coincidentally when they both wore Nike, but that's not why they're not on the team. This is why. In 2021, Nike terminated Kyrie Irving's contract following the whole anti-Semitism controversy. Interestingly enough, guess who not only defended Kyrie Irving but also attacked Nike during this situation? It was former teammate Jalen Brown saying, quote, Since when did Nike care about ethics? Basically, Jalen Brown accused them of being unethical and being major hypocrites for trying to play the moral high ground in regards to anything. Jalen Brown has now learned the hard way that when you speak out against the establishment, the establishment will suppress you. And do they have enough influence? So, but I mean, we can keep going on and on. It's like this, I, I, even though that is something to think it, it is a conspiracy, mm -hmm. I don't think it's that. What is it? I just don't. It's easy for somebody to look back and, and take Put and pl plug and play certain different things. And this is um, from uh, the YouTuber DKM, so we got to shout him out for this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like, it's, 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 it's very well put together. Yeah, the story is making sense. Yes, but that don't necessarily mean like, because yeah. we live in a world that conspiracy theories happen only after the... It already happened. It already happened. And anybody can go back and be like, man, you know what? It was raining. You know what? She didn't show. You know what? They did... The Mm -hmm. These things, like, yeah, but you can't think too deep into stuff. So, question for you. Obviously, when you came in the league, you signed with Under Armour. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Nike is who Nike is. It's probably the biggest, you know, sports brand out there for our athleisure wear. 
So talk to me about that. Even when you was hitting the high to heights, MVPs, this and that, rookie year, all that, did you feel like even if you would have did, like with Nike, you would have got celebrated more or would have been on even more campaigns? Like you was can't miss, period. Mm -hmm. But how do you think it changed from being with the Under Armour versus a Nike? Like did you think that had an effect on anything? Uh, Exposure, probably. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, knowing what I know now is distribution does matter. Mm -hmm. And that's really why uh, people – get out of the independent route because mm. you're responsible for so much of expanding yeah, the brand. Yeah. When you're with a company like Nike, yeah. when you're with a agency like WME, when you're with a lot of big corporations, they it's, it's almost you know a double-edged sword in a good way where you sign with them, they give you the exposure where it's a global type of deal. Um but for me, I never, never cared. It was more personal mm. to me than that. Like when I came out, uh, Under Armour was willing to pay me more and to prioritize me more. Mm. I went where I, I was like wanted. Wanted and appreciated, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, like they wanted me. No, I went where I was needed. Mm. Like that was, and wanted, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like. Nike, they came back with, you know, they just wanted me as the, you know, potential first round pick or first pick of the draft. I seen everything. I went Jordan, Adidas, Reebok, fuck, all that. And mm. then you start seeing your value to these. And the paper you know, start rolling out. Yeah. yeah. So then when they sit up there and they roll out or they give you an offer, it's like, damn, that's how much you think? Cool. And you see somebody else, it was like, yo, that's love. And I get, and I get, and I get, and I get. <laughs> Shit, give me the pen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hurry up, Peggy. <laughs> Shit, get the hell out the damn way. <laughs> it's more than a little, little two cents right here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is a good scratch. Yeah. So, yeah, man, like those things. And something I was just said in this, this little article was, you know, when you go against a major corporation, Bro, we got to stop start normalizing the right and the truth. You can't be afraid to tell truth to power. Bro. Mm. Amen. Say that one more time. You cannot be afraid to tell truth to power. Yes. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it don't matter if he's bigger than you. It doesn't matter if she's bigger than you. It doesn't matter if the company is worth more than yours. It's like, bro, I have to tell the truth. And that's the only thing that I feel that is like, – I, 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 I don't just – riddle off shit just to riddle it off i'm like yo bro this is the truth that i know and it's backed by real shit it yeah. ain't just no shit from my ass my ass <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know i'm saying so that's how i feel about it next clip all right maryland governor westmore takes it to another level on, what's going on? We're gonna switch up real quick. We're gonna start Man, the defense this pause time. That right We're there. gonna start defense. All right. Seen hey, this defense. Shit. Turk Jack's team ready. I seen this shit. Hey, offense. Turk Jack's team ready. Hey, Terrapin. Turk Jack's team ready. Okay, go. For the people at for the people at home, boy. Let them watch this too. They need some love, too. They need some fourth and one. Defense. All right. Hey, defense. Turk Jack's team ready. Hey, offense, Turk Jack's team ready. I press pause right there. H okay. <laughs> he looked like he got Peggy Jersey on the smile there, Jersey. Peggy, uh -huh. everybody looked like they legit uh -huh. in warm-ups and yeah, hey, right. rallies uh -huh. and pep talks uh -huh. and screaming and hollering, Merck Tech team ready. Got the vibes on. Warm-up warrior. I mean, he getting all his, his shit in. Yeah. Keep playing. Hey, Terrapin, Turk Jack's team ready. Exercise. Exercise. Indy, you got Indy, you got Indy. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Over here. You're Over here. Let's go. Right there. What? All right. Right there is where we will find that that gentleman that was turned up team ready. He was a fish out of the water. Mm -hmm. You could tell by his 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 posture. He could tell by his uh, 
body language saying mm -hmm. that, oh, this is a little too much. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to govern shit. I ain't trying to hit shit. You see what I'm saying? But there's a lot of people just like this young fella, no disrespect to him and his political views and all this thing that he's trying to do yeah. for change. Cool. But when mm -hmm. you come over here on this gridiron, all uh, that rah rah don't matter. Don't huh? get your, does not matter. Just chit chatter. <laughs> does not. <laughs> what they should have did is say, Coach, full pass. No. Coach, <laughs> lay right there on your back. Uh huh. Hey, y'all. Uh, Big Boot. 99. 99 <laughs> coming through for the 2000s. This Come is, on now. You want some votes? <laughs> This, this is how you land on the line. Yeah, this is this is what about to tell everybody in the state of Maryland why they should vote for you. Yeah. Because you're willing to put your body through it all. Yeah. And is you going to stand up or are you going to lay down? Golly. You know what I'm saying? Can I follow you? Because <laughs> uh -huh. when I'm seeing here, like, everybody got, Whoa, TV, ready? Because he only got the shoulder pads on. That's right? what I'm trying to tell yeah. you. He knew what day to come out there. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. looked the part. Oh, he look it. Look, that's like he get in the gym and stuff. But I have seen a lot of people look the part, Peggy. Bro, look like Tarzan, hit like James. And, and, and come on. Man. When that referee do, <laughs> all that screaming and hollering. That screeching. Hold up, rewind that one more time. Uh huh. We gonna find 24. Yeah. Yeah, we gonna find 24. Over here. Yeah, he gonna find everything cool. That's that first day of practice type of energy. Yeah, everybody ready for that first week of practice, first day of practice. Yeah, cool. All that nice ass shit. Cause press pause right there, Peggy. Go about like three more seconds. Yeah, cause this is how I know he ain't no stepper. Right there. What the fuck is your wristbands at, man? He went straight generic. Where your gloves at, man? He ain't got no mouthpiece in. That's how I know. Him. That's how you know. Okay. And at that point, we knew. He was fucked up. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell y'all, man. Y'all just think y'all could just come out here to this gridiron, think that shit cool. That's cool. Like, it's a different beast out there. Yeah. Like, because these type of days, like, real football players know. First day of practice, everybody hype. Yeah. Third, fourth day, okay, cool. Now the second and third week, yeah. First day of pass, how you acting? Kid? Yeah. Oh shit, I'm straight. My jersey color red. <laughs> so and I and I say that to protect you. Ooh. <laughs> say what now? What you, you say that to do what? I'm trying to tell you, TD. Ah. So you keep fucking around. It ain't nothing for me to take that red jersey, y'all. This shit came as a caution to let y'all motherfuckers know he is not to be fucked with. You hear me? So y'all motherfuckers talking about, bro, we can hit you. That's cool, but what if I can hit you? Yeah. Hell, is you talking about little bitty ass little boy? <laughs> fuck wrong with you. See, that's the thing that I miss. See, they're getting up out of. I don't give a fuck what you governing, nigga. This shit the field out here. You on my goddamn politician campaign. Bitch ass nigga. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fuck all that vote shit, little bit ass nigga. Get it out the mud and put your goddamn mouthpiece on and strap your oh. shit on. <laughs> Fuck, boy. Yeah. Cause shit, look, if I could rent, look, if I had that opportunity to be like, Governor, Governor West. West, hey. Cam Newton, hey. Oh shit, all right, pet. Hands up. Shit, cause I'm looking eyeball to eyeball the mm. whole time. Nah, give me the mouthpiece. Nah, fuck that. Fuck that. <laughs> Nobody give a fuck about them puss ass degrees, motherfucker. Get your ass up. Man, he played wide receiver, man. Two years ago. No, at John he did Hopkins. not play a no. At John Hopkins. No. That's a no. medical school. No. You would have sent him to the blue tent. Listen here. He would have had to analyze himself in that <laughs> medical tent. Yeah, I'm trying to tell. I see that shit. I don't, bro. I don't. Every football player know. You know who pussy. You know, man. Look, and I don't know, man. I gotta keep it a buck. It's football season, Woo! damn it. You, this is, that, you yeah. ain't seen a motherfucker pass no basketball to me, motherfucker. It's football season. Yeah. So all that nice ass shit.
and fuck all that. Yeah. And strap that shit up. And if you come out here half stepping, uh-huh. you better put your butt pad in, home boy. Cause you gonna need that shit. Cause that's gonna be the first thing that hit. <laughs> fuck wrong with you. Coming out here playing, talking about oh, team Ryan. <laughs> fuck about no shit like that, man. It's a football field, coach. <laughs> Hell is you talking about? We got a receiver. Nah. Back to what I was saying. Yeah, okay. You know who pussy. You know who just out here to just to boom. And then they don't the people who don't talk mm-hmm. or who don't perform, you can't talk in the locker room. You can't, you can't pick a song in the locker room. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You can't eat first in the cafeteria. For real? Man, watch out, man. Watch out. <laughs> Give a fuck. Man, watch out. Hey man, let me get some of that uh, vegan spaghetti, please. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's his food. Uh uh-uh. uh. What that is? Man, watch out. Here, just take the meatballs off that and just. You know, that's, <laughs> man, that's like an unwritten rule. That's unwritten rule. Pat, you just you know if poop. you ain't balling, just Bro, get in the back of the line. Let me t- matter of fact, you already know. When you are. <laughs> man, go on here, big dog. Man, come Look, on. you earned your stripes. You today. already know what it is. Yeah. You so what if you a player that ball out, but you just had a bad day in practice? That's just a bad day of practice. Oh, okay. But I'm trying to tell you, how bad are we talking about, Peggy? I mean, Bull done threw four interceptions in practice. That did not happen. <laughs> that did not happen. But see, that's the thing. Yeah. See, see, practice bug and game day bug is two different type of bugs. Mm. See, TD knew practice bug. He don't know. He don't, he know, don't game. know game day. And this is the thing. Like, y'all seen me mic'd up for all the times that I was mic'd up, it went viral. So just imagine if I was mic'd up every time. Like, bro, I'm a professional shit talker, bro. Man, I wish you was mic'd up. Let me tell you, they was trying to get me mic'd yeah. up. I wish they would let us but mic I, you but up. But I started realizing, like, hey, ho, whoa, 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 whoa. You ain't paying me I money. would sacrifice this little money yeah. or this little mic. Because I know y'all gonna make millions off of this That's true. alone. This ain't got nothing to do with the contract. This has everything to do with, like, this is must see TV, man. And, like, I'm gonna really fuck with that. Like, it's all game, though. It's all game. Yeah. We got politician in the house tonight, y'all, motherfucker. Don't nobody give a damn. Like, bro, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta go somewhere. Yeah. You gotta go somewhere, and you just have to be like, man, during this 60 minutes of time, oh, I don't like you, nigga. This ain't. <laughs> We ain't homeboys. You step on that field. We ain't partners. Uh-uh. I'm trying to shit on you, man. <laughs> this is this is mandatory. <laughs> Come on, bro. This football season is back. Yeah. Oh, ah. man. Ooh, so when people too. ask, they like, man, you ever miss it? Yes, I miss it. To be able to look a motherfucker in his eye uh-huh. and just tell him, you not fucking with me. Yeah. And I will fuck your ass up out here. And it's legal. <laughs> so what you want to do? Yeah. I did not come to play with you. I don't even play with my kids, man. <laughs> so I'd be damned if I'm going to play with you today. Yeah. I don't even have any video games, <laughs> man. So listen here. It's going to go one or two ways. And both of them ways, you're going to be on your ass. But I'm just trying. We got we got we got more about your game day prep coming up in the show, cause I don't see how this man go from the once he get off that New York prayer. It's over. It's, it's, it's over. We gotta talk about that. We are gonna talk about that later in the show. Say less, but y'all get me. I'm. Y'all know we get high. I'm just. I'm relapsing. I'm having a <laughs> detoxing know, moment God, right damn. now. <laughs> Pray <laughs> somebody. In. You might need a trainer. Here we go. Therapy. Next, Next clip. clip. Man, the NFL announced week this week all 32 teams will be implementing implementing facial recognition software to verify and identify everyone in the stadium. So it's no face, no case. It's over with out here. Over with. This is a video. So they'll be able to pick out whoever in that stadium. Zoom down in. It's like Google Earth type. I love it. Don't keep caught sneaking and geeking. What are you talking about? Look at everybody. They go Peggy right there. (laughs) Go back up. Rewind that. They go Peggy. Right. Yeah, go on back. You right trying to hit on me with my number four? Nah, with that hair. <laughs> with that hole in your head. You know what I'm saying? It's all good with the sunroof. I you know what I'm saying? Players going to play. You know what I'm saying? Michael Jordan, you got a ball here. It's okay, I but he's a billionaire. Be. This feels cool. A billionaire. Why coming in? 
It's still a goat, baby. Still a goat over here, baby. Nah, nah, nah. That's a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a donkey. That's Please. not a goat. So what you, yeah, what's, what's your, I think so. The value in this, I would feel like they would know For everybody. security and protection. Yeah. Security and protection. Ain't nobody going to come in here and do nothing. We got to think all them people that get in fights during the middle of the game. Out of buy. Got them. Y'all want to do all that streaking and shit? <laughs> oh, over with. Out of buy. We gonna we gonna figure you out. Yeah. They better put that same security system yeah. in them tunnels. Mm. Just saying. But nobody really in the tunnels, huh? That's what you think. That's true. Well, wow, yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of operations, a lot of Some, people walking there. A finesse are gonna finesse. Uh-huh. He gonna find a crevice somewhere. A jug gonna jug. He gonna jug. Yeah. A motherfucker ganker gonna gank some shit. You dig <laughs> what I'm saying? He gonna say, hold on, hold on, hold on. What is mine? Got a camera right there. I got a camera right there. Oh, they gonna figure it out. <laughs> they ain't got no camera back there. Right. You know what I'm saying? They ain't get me yet. They ain't get me. Cool. <laughs> Here we go. Next clip. Yo, that boy Brandon Jacobs. He knows something or two about that white girl. Skrr, hold up. He did a line of cocaine before a game in high school. He did. What? what? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Wait a minute. It was one of my homeboys that graduated the year before me. I was walking into the, the the weight room. He was like, hey, guess what I got? What you got? I got that white girl. I'm like, oh, for real? You want to try? I'm like, yeah, you try it. Man, you said, I'm a double and dabble. Yeah. What game was it? What's the game? Right, right. I'll show you what's the game. game. Three, three thirty-eight, four touchdowns. <laughs> Killed it. I, I destroyed it. I destroyed it. Crazy. It, 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 was, it, was, it was easy. I felt like I was the only one out there. Nah, nah. Green did it in the green I ain't never did it again. I mean, I should have did it again. It's, it's, it's risky business, but 338. Yeah, yeah, 4 TD. Yeah. Well, imagine no. trying to tackle this nigga in high school. Bro. Imagine yeah. trying to tackle this nigga. Oh, go game. Nigga, what are you talking about? Come on. He got a ball head. Come on. <laughs> what do we say? He don't care. He doesn't care. Oh man, but he's off that white girl, that sidewalk chop, that power flower. What you think, bro? I think um, by a show of hand, <laughs> if you think that was the only time in his life, I right, never done it again that he ever did. A substance that garnered him 338 yards and four touchdowns. Four tutty buddies. Like, and, and, and what you don't know is athletes have a strong sense of superstition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. So you about to sit up here and tell me with a straight face that you didn't sit up here and do that white girl. That was your first time talking to that white girl? <laughs> okay. And you find out that white girl did you good. <laughs> and you ain't come back to her. And you ain't go back to that white girl. Bullshit. Big bullshit. Uh. <laughs> That's horse shit right there. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. If you think I'm about to motherfucker believe that shit, shit. Michael Jackson is on Old National right now. <laughs> <laughs> Moonwalking. I mean, let me tell you something. Selling out <laughs> the pool palace. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Fuck no. That ain't it. That ain't it. Shit. But cocaine? Oh, man. Woo! Mm, mm, mm. He said, you got some of that white girl, that white girl. Yeah, that <laughs> white girl. Ooh. Got 338 yards. <laughs> did something good to me. Matter of fact, let me tell you, me knowing niggas, he probably did another batch in halftime. <laughs> Read me up, cuz. God damn, this shit hit. I got 152 uh, two, two tons right now. Cut that shit up, man. They cutting it up with their cleats. <laughs> Take your up. Not breaking down with the cleats. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to do all that shit. I just see a lot of whole bunch of Colombian damn narcos shit. <laughs> damn. Oh my God. I cut it up with the cleats. Me and my girl got this joke, baby. She's like, <laughs> if you were to do it, it's a voice in your head that just said, mm, ah, it's spear. <laughs> it's it's spear. Yeah. Hey, like, bro. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. What's up? 
Where did he go to high school at? That's what I'm trying. And then you having cocaine in high school. Hold on. No, 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 no. No, Peggy. What's up? Oh, he's older than him. It's almost like this, Peggy. What's up? You're going to find the freshest seafood in an inland state? No, you're not. Okay. You're going to find the freshest seafood somewhere close to the water, right? Yes, sir. So, it couldn't have been beer. <laughs> it was stopped out. If it, it, like, that's what I'm trying to ask you. What Where high school did he go to? Because that's going to tell me everything. That I, now, if he went to school in Miami, it makes sense. Yeah. If he went to school in, like, Charleston, Louisiana, mm. you know what I'm saying, L.A., yeah. Assumption High School in Louisiana? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he can. No, that, no. But it was probably some, it's probably some, some rerun, it's, some no, breakdown. No, no, See, if it was like down. in Oklahoma or Mississippi uh-huh. or Tennessee, I don't know. What do I know? I don't know about them bricks. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know about that white girl. Hell oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, when you think about this whole situation, it's like, yo, what in the... I just don't believe that he just... Is that did. a performance Hanson joy? And he said it felt like I was out there by myself. Shit. <laughs> <sighs> Woo! I know. Coach. Turn all the way up. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then he already big as fuck. Already? Who the fuck am I by himself, bitch? You was 6'4", 235 pounds with 2% body fat. On cocaine. On cocaine. You like of cocaine course you beer. felt like a street fighter. <laughs> Are you okay? Motherfucker, and had two bricks of cocaine in your damn shoulder pads. Bruh. Next clip, man. <laughs> Here we go, third down. Player fashion, a.k.a. Boogie approved. What you got for me, Peg? Your boy, Skip Bayless, all right? Ern- Ernestine. Ernestine, she done snapped a candidate of him. Is he looking good? Is he fly, man? Skip just wrapped up his last episode of Undisputed FS1. Man, I know we've been critical in the past, but, man, we got to give Skip some type of flowers of his last day of uh, Undisputed. What's next for the 72-year-old man, bro? Is he looking smooth right there, bro, and all black? Why he wearing all black? Man, he's still killing the game, bro. What your mama say, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Next clip. <laughs> <laughs> now I ain't gonna do you like that, Skip. <laughs> um, but come on down to fourth and one. Mm. Oh, yeah, he should come on and jump on the show. Listen. This is a real invite. I, it, no, this is a real invite. Okay. Skip, Skipper, Marquavius, Bayless, the fourth. I come to you as a humble friend asking you to let's settle our differences. I know that there is an ego the size of the world on your side. Me, I'm a person that would just like to make good TV and good content. And I think me and you can make that happen. So, as the old saying says, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I promise you, if you give me the opportunity, five shows, Skip, that's all I ask. Mm. Five. I will compensate you and Ernestine the best I know how. And I will appreciate you and you talking about debates. Mm. Oh, my goodness, Skip. If you give me that opportunity to spar with you verbally, it will be something that you will enjoy just as much as the people would. So, Skip, what do you say? Skipper, what do you say? We could talk about you and your cowboys all you want, and I can debate you till the cows come home. Prove to you with one stat after another stat of why they are still not America's team. And um, while we're debating, I vow to give Miss Ernstein um, a full spa wherever she wants to go in the beautiful city of Atlanta, Georgia. 
where we have amenities galore. What do you say? If you need to get in contact with me, Skip, it's simple. Just go on Instagram, at C-A-N. Um, and I'll be waiting. This is not horse. This is not pig. This is not no games. I really, humbly, as I know how. <sighs> Thank you, Cam. I think that was heartfelt. And I'm going to tell you like this. Don't come here half-stepping. Because this ain't Richard Sherman. This ain't Keyshawn Johnson. This ain't Paul Pierce. If you want to have a discussion and a debate, if you want to do numbers, motherfucker, let's go. <laughs> there you go. Come on now. Next clip. And you look good, too, and your, your, your Tom Ford... James Bond, yeah. Steve Jobs esque. You look good. You look healthy. Because everybody was saying all this bad stuff about you, Skip. I ain't know. They ain't going to be saying nothing besides, man, I got to go watch Cam and Skip if you give me them five shows. So, people, what y'all think? Me and Skip, Boog and Skip, Skip and Boog. Yeah. It don't matter who named first, <laughs> but I know it's going to be must see TV. It is, now. For sure. Cause, cause, look. What's that? Now? Let me ask you this. Okay. Now I didn't stop playing with my nose because y'all think. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Let me stop. Yeah, thank you on that booger sugar stop. now. Let me stop that white girl. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the white guy right now. Hold on, watch <laughs> out. Listen. Do you think uh -huh. me and Skip can do better numbers than Stephen A. and Shannon Sharp? Who could compete? This is just, that, that, that's that a question a, to the people. Because mm -hmm. I fuck with Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith. Yeah. But they don't have no competition that's out there. Now, granted, Fox, speak. Yeah. They doing some numbers. Yeah. I like watching. Emmanuel Acho, Joy Taylor. Um, McCoy on that. Shady. Yeah. And I can't forget about um, the receiver, James Jones. Yeah. Their debates is... Chef's kiss. But, Skipper, my guy, consider it. Skip and Cam. Cam and Skip. Can skip just consider it. Yeah. And let the people decide. Just, you want to do numbers. See, you, you, if you want to do numbers, I done said it a thousand times, Peggy. I'm a lot of things. Uh -huh. But I ain't bored. Uh -huh. Talk to him, bro. Skip, do the right thing, brother. Skip on down here to 4th and 1. Come on down here. Make it so convenient. Here we go. Next clip. Your boy, Clay Thompson, then went to the motherland. Check him out. Yeah. Side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 ah, ah, ah. Yeah, okay, Clay. <laughs> Clay. <laughs> Clay. That's right ain't they had that in your hey. package, Clay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's Please. Up? What athletes do you know that can actually dance? Like, dudes that can actually dance? So what athletes do you know that can dance, Cam? It's a lot of them. It's a lot of them. Now, uh, Pacheco? Buck and Chiefs? Dance. Odell. Odell can. Buck and dance. Um, I would say Kirko. Kirko can definitely yeah. dance. No. No. Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Kurt, like, let's stay on Kirk Cousins real quick. Oh. 
he, you know, he walked into training camp pretty fly. Yeah. But with his shoes, man, he just can't wear no training. Like, I'm in Atlanta, bro. You got to wear some G-Nikes. Help him out, man. Air Forces or something. But, yeah, it's okay. Get on, get on the acclimate to Atlanta. Man, shut up. Um, yeah, them top three dancers. Yeah, we got that. I just like to see them getting their hands on. I need to see what the hell they gonna do. Man. Then, yeah, I like to see that shit. Yeah, um, yeah, that's it. Next clip. Well, meanwhile, you got Kyrie in Greece. Show a little triple threat. On the beach, teaching a little basketball with some of the kids. So Cam, as you see this, obviously you are naturally a coach. You are a coach. Right. But have you been in you know situations like this? How is it? It's like you love the game so much, now you're able to give it and teach it to somebody I else. just hope that it was respected as yeah. much as it was. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. sometimes you could be in that mode where you're trying to teach and somebody just trying to play with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Meaning, like he's talking to those three individuals and then people like walk a pass and – I mean, like, I ain't really playing. I'm really trying to have a connected yeah, moment with, correct, you know, with trying to teach somebody something. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, it's always in you to to help or serve the next person. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But uh, shout out to uh, Kyrie for that. Yeah, that's solid. Here we go, next clip. Here we go, fourth down fan question of the week. Let me see what we got, Peggy. We got now C1 three month icon member shout hey! out. Hey! But drop the big three dollars on that. <laughs> big three. So Cam Pig, if y'all were to have enough time to properly train, what Olympic sport do you feel you'd have the best chance to place gold in? E gaming. Ooh. It's gonna be. It's gonna be eventually, probably. You ain't been paying attention to me and all my kids. Ah, going crazy. Going, or or YouTube more Cam new. Yeah. What did you saying, man? Sponsored by Golden Thumb Promotions. Golden. Been whooping some ass, man. We've been going viral for all the right and wrong reasons. Come on now. Been getting banned. That's okay. <laughs> We've we been getting home. more banned than the Taliban. I mean, God, tomorrow. about it. You know? So esports. Nah, damn. Would I go go there? Careful what you say now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was the decent track running back in my day. <laughs> but no, there ain't no go. I can't go. I ain't gonna go. What go. event? I would do if four hundred. <laughs> ain't, ain't no no sprint. I'm a, I'm a full sprint one time around the track. I had good endurance. Good enough speed to keep up with the pack. But I, the way they be moving, don't <laughs> be throwing no flags on me. <laughs> you know what, bro? You saying what now, bro? Man, I said, <laughs> I said the four hundred used to be my thing. But I don't, look, I don't, I don't. And gold is a little extreme. I might go wooden in it. But I ain't gonna go gold, man. Them cats really do that thing. I don't, I don't, I don't really be like. What event, man? Man, I don't. That's that's the only thing I could think of. Peggy. What? I'm your boy. I know. That's what I'm trying it's to tell you. My that's job to really hold you accountable keep it, keep it. for the things that you say. They say never say never. It would have to be a sport that ain't that's different. Omar, what's up? You would never get a medal. It would be one of them chocolate medals <laughs> that they give you at the restaurant. They ain't said what type of gold you're going, player. And, uh, nigga, that's a fool's gold. <laughs> that's what you'll win. I might do one of them long distance. No, you're not, Peggy. Do you see them Nigerians and them motherfucking? Bro, I, I could run distance. Them, them foreigners running. I'm a distance. Bro, they runner. got. You know, they like, said he said properly trained. 
Peggy, it don't matter how long you train for. You could train for eight years. Man, you know what? See, I got to go back in my bag, bro. Show y'all. I really got endurance. I ain't the fastest, Peggy, but I'm fast enough. These folks I, that run for long distance, they got two different hearts. <laughs> it's like German engineering. Like, when you when you pull up a, a, a exotic car, like a Ferrari or Is this my answer or your answer? It's like, they got God two man. different motors, bro. They that weak ass gaming. They got you ain't undefeated in gaming. Who ain't? Shit. Well, run something then, Peggy. Well, come on then, fool. Listen, I'm trying no, to tell wait. you something. Look, all right. I'm trying to help you out. See, you getting so sensitive when I'm telling you the facts. It ain't for you to get mad at me. We sitting two feet from each other. And I'm telling you right now, as a good friend of mine, uh -huh. a true royal friend of the crown, uh -huh. I'm trying to be humble and tell you the right way. I ain't raising my voice. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't calling you out your name. I ain't telling you what you can't do. I'm just telling you what's realistic. And son, well, I'm still searching for mine. It is physically impossible for you to ever. <laughs> you sound like that coach that's telling you getting cut for the team. Get going. Son, listen, it, it, it. it will never happen. <laughs> this, listen, uh, shout out to the person who asked that initial question. But, Peggy, your best years <laughs> wouldn't even allow you to play. <laughs> Shut your ass. Next, next question, man. You know just, what? Just give it about next next clip. I just had to say it. Jay Tuck, okay? Say less. What's your thoughts on the current landscape of college football with NIL mm. and the portal? Do you think there should be limitations or do you think the Wild Wild West? I love it. You like the Wild Wild West? I love it. Uh. Why so? I love it. Because check this out, Peggy. What's up? Coaches have been in the NIL program way before we've identified it to be NIL. That's true. Give you an example, Peggy. Mm -hmm. Let's say I recruit you, five-star recruit, mm -hmm. from Bumblefuck High <laughs> to come to the amazing college of DeVry okay. on a full scholarship to run your mm -hmm. little 400 meters. There you go. Put some respect on my phone, honey. All right? Uh -huh. I recruit you. I talk to your parents. I talk to your whole surrounding. I, I get updates and check up on you constantly. Man, we want you at DeVry. We want, we want you at Boogieville State. Yeah. Huh? Come on over here to Boogieville State. We're going to do you right. We'll treat you right. Give you all the things that you're going to need to get you better for the next level. So yeah. while you're training for the Olympics, we'll get you down. You want that raggedy-ass track. Go ahead. You commit. Right? Uh-huh. You go to DeVry. Or Boogieville State, whatever the fuck you want to yeah. call it. The day you enroll, I, as the recruiter, gets another opportunity at Boogieville University. You out of there. For 600000 I was getting paid, let's say, 300000 mm -hmm. Boogieville University offers me 600000 I got a go family to, to think University. about. Hello, come on now. With no penalty, with no nothing. Yeah. Coaches have been doing this for years. Now, all of a sudden, these last couple of years, players have been able to do that. Yeah. And we're going to look at the players and say, like, oh, shit. What the fuck? It's, it's bad for the sport. It's terrible. No. They've no. been, if they're able to level no. up. So I say this, though. What NIL and the transfer portal has done, pay attention. Okay. High school athlete, it has done diminish the value of a high school athlete because as a recruiter if i'm sitting up here saying damn i need a, a athlete that is extremely good and if you ask anybody in college what's the number one thing that affects performance is maturity mm. a lot of these players they go to lsu they go to georgia they go to alabama auburn clemson usc they're not mature enough to understand what is it like to be a Division One athlete. And Power Five. So yeah. why would I spend my time, effort, and energy with a knucklehead out of high school when then I can get somebody in the transfer portal who's way more mature and is ready to prove something way more? Yeah. So these five-star athletes out of high school, they're going to sit up here and they're going to say, oh, man, I got 62 offers. I got 32 offers. I can go anywhere. No, you can't. A lot of those offers are not committable. Mm. Even though you got an offer from Alabama, you can't go to Alabama. Some three other people right, right there. there. Come on, you play receiver. You'll be a fool to go to Alabama. They already got four receivers committed. Why would you be the fifth? That's a whole nother discussion for a whole nother topic. Next question. All right, we got Michael Rimmer. All right, he said, what was your favorite memory from hosting kickball tournaments in Charlotte camp? Mm. 
Those are some classic tournaments. It was. Classic memory? Yeah. Um, Your favorite memory? I had a walk-off homer. Yeah. I appreciated that. What's some of the people that used to come to the tournament? The man. You got it. Yeah. List goes on. It was, it was, I need to bring that back. We're going we're gonna to bring it back soon. But the bases was loaded. No, we were down. Had two people on. We was down by two. This was in the Panther Stadium one, right? Panther Stadium. Yes. Oh, yeah, right. And it came. It was good. It was good. Yeah. It was, the pressure was on. Yeah. You know? <sighs> Ain't no pressure for me, though. <sighs> That's when Big Bug had to remind folks that y'all in my house. Yeah. I got the keys to the bank. Ah, oh, come on, dog. That sense is still good. <laughs> they ain't switched the lock on you, They, ain't, they can't. <laughs> you can't switch the lock on that, big bro. Because I'm going to tell you something. Verified. <laughs> so, yeah, that was something that I just, <sighs> that walk-off kick, I was just like, oh, man. Everything. All right. What we got? All right. Rapid Five Mills, forever my QB number one. He said, would you ever consider creating an esports organization? I'm so close to creating, not necessarily to an organization, but I just want to do like virtual tournaments because mm. I've really enjoyed these, this last month, let's just keep it up because I've really just been taking it serious for like a month. Bro, the engagement that you get with people, bro. And I don't know if y'all know it now. I'm just not no dummy. I got my degree in sociology yeah. and I've identified very long ago that I really love people. Mm -hmm. I love interacting with people. And that just feeds and it fuels the desire. Peg, you know what time I went to sleep last night? But I passed my bedtime. 4 a.m. 4 a.m., Peggy. <laughs> and I'm enjoying every minute of it. Doing all the go to go to uh, thumbs production. Promotions. I looked at that damn stream time and I said five hours. I got on at 10, 11 at p.m. going strong. I don't, you know, so it's so many different versions of cam on that. Yeah, you know, you got competitive cam. Mm -hmm. That's one. You got mafia bug. Okay. You got Two. vino bug that we found out last night. You know, I get the, you know what I mean. Vino I got, bug. Vino bug. You know, we get the popping. Wine, I don't drink nothing but wine. You digging them? Your saying? lips done start turning purple. Man, if it ain't purple, it, you ain't really drinking like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we sip occasionally. We don't sip every nine. Then we sip like boom. You know what I mean? You got to keep that pinky out there. <laughs> Look, then you you know you give me a troll book. Uh huh. You see my boy Rage quit. <laughs> I ain't even, look, I ain't even know he wanted to talk. I talk to everybody. It don't matter who you is. I got the chat with you. Yeah. So it's so many different versions of me. Oh, I just may get locked in, bug. You know, that's mm -hmm. competitive, bug, too, but, you know. Make sure y'all tune in to your boy. Check him out. More Cam New. Where YouTube. they can find you? Me and all my kids replace the I with the number one. Okay, cool. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. Y'all on Paradox. Twitch. He said, if today's Cam Newton could talk to young Cam Newton, what would you tell him about how everything turned out? You're right. Mm. Say that one more time. You're right. Elaborate. I would tell my younger self, you're right. Indecisive, questioning, like, man, am I tripping? Hey, man, it, why? You're right. You ain't supposed to blend in with these folks. Yeah. Be you. That's okay. Be mm. uniquely you. As long as you're not bringing people down, you impact people in the positive way, you use your influence to impact people in the positive way, you do it how you do it. And that's why I would tell myself you're right. That's solid, bro. I'm going to help somebody with that one. Yeah. Man, my guy Keon said, we're going to break it down in two, two sectors. What does a Sunday morning routine look like getting ready for a 1 p.m. game? That's number one. Uh, wake up at 6 a.m. Okay. Uh, personal rehab around about seven to about like nine. Um, depending on where I'm at, I would go, I would either stay in the uh, hotel and then drive to the house to change or just keep everything at the hotel. Uh, it's two different schedules, whether you are at away or home. So about nine, if it's at a 1 p.m. Uh, game, you'll try to get to the 
uh, filled around about three hours before. So you have like an hour to crunch in, getting ready, showering, meditating, uh, saying goodbyes to family, friends, or whoever was at the game at that particular point in time, get to the uh, field. As soon as I get to the field or get to the stadium, I would always have like a, a game plan uh, review with the coordinator or the quarterback coach. Ideal, go over the first 10 plays or the first plays or the first thoughts of the plays. Um, and it's just different phases of, of energy that you're exerting. So when I'm in that you know, rehab phase early in the morning, nobody, I'm not talking to nobody. You know, it's just so solid, you know, with a place of solitude and just understanding your thoughts trying to manifest certain things that you can kind of see how they're going to play uh, play you, how you're going to attack versus them. Um, and then as you go kind of – you kind of break character a little bit uh, when you get around friends or family because, you know, that's where you just want to feel the emotions of like, okay, everybody's excited. Mm -hmm. uh, but the respect of everybody around me was – they never wanted to kind of get me out of the focus. So what I mean by that is they wouldn't – like if somebody's tire was flat, they mm -hmm. wouldn't mention those things. It's like we'll handle it. We just need you to, to, you know, if we're playing music, you know what I'm saying, you come in, the kids around, like, boom. Like you're feeding off of everybody's good energy. Yeah. And as I would go to the, uh, to the stadium, I wouldn't really listen, listen to, like, Rowdy music like that phase from 6 a.m. to about 11 is all gospel, all mm -hmm. gospel of meditative music. Mm -hmm. But after that meeting with the coordinator, mm -hmm. that's boogie. Here he come. And what time? What now? What time did that 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 hit? About 11, mm. 11 30. Yeah. But you just gotta, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> and and it's, it was, it's hard to explain, but it's that's how it goes. Yeah. Like, my mind was able to compartmentalize the different versions of where phase I had to go into to lock in for the actual game. And when the game happened, it didn't matter. I, I was walking into the phase of it's going to be what it's going to be. There was times where I was scared, yeah. There was times where I was nervous, yeah. There was times where I was anxious, yeah. There was times where I was uncertain, yeah. But motherfucker, let me tell you something. Help the motherfucking bell. Come on now. Cause, bro, that, that's how my dad raised me. Yeah. I don't know how to blink when I'm looking eyeball to eyeball with somebody. Like, you got to understand this, bro. I'm willing to go wherever you're willing to go. Mm. And only but one of us going to come back with somebody here. Mm. And I'm going to be holding your scalp. Yeah. You hear me? Come on now. There ain't you know. much to say after that. I mean, is it a different adjustment if it's a Monday night game or a Sunday night game? Or yeah, you just, it, it just pushes things a little forward, meaning like the later the game, the later you start. Yeah. So it started at 6 a.m. for a 1 a.m. game or 1 p.m. game. Yeah, it'll probably start at. 10 a.m. Yeah, for yeah, a later yeah. game, because you just want to keep that same routine. So you keep you definitely are same routine same every routine. Sunday. Yeah. Cam was the same. All right, Gamecock T Raz three said, "Hey Cam, huge fan. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite post game outfit that you ever wore?" No, that's a hard question. I don't, it's not something that first off top right. That's that not, ain't true. Yeah, they done. <laughs> Catch it out, bro. Yeah, I said, bro, now I know these post games. I yeah, ain't never seen that photo, one. That's Photoshop. They done Photoshopped you. Yeah, but um, no, nah, I just really enjoyed putting it together. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so many different versions and how I feel that given week that I was just, I just felt free, man. Now, Boog, take us through, or take really the world through. Obviously, your preparation for the game day, but how did your outfit preparation go throughout the week? That was that was my that was my me time. Yeah. So, for people who don't know, I always say this: with athletic quarterbacks, you always get the short end of the stick as far as preparation. But on a given week, my long days were Wednesdays and Thursdays, mm -hmm. physical. 
Now, Tuesdays, I would probably have a late start, and that was the universal off day in the NFL. Yeah. But Tuesdays, I would kind of come in around 5 p.m., real quiet around. Uh, I had a great relationship with the play caller, officer coordinator, for obvious reasons, or the quarterback coach, and they would just – sometimes I didn't even need to see them, but they would have everything how I needed to process information. And I would just go through – uh, pin 10 plays, that's like first plays of the drive um, and first and second down cut-ups. Or those particular days, I would just watch the flow of the game. Because mm-hmm. you're not really playing against the defenders that you see on film. You're playing against the play caller of the defenders. What does he like to do? Okay, it's 45 seconds left in the game. What does he like? Is he conservative? Is he aggressive? Who does he like to, to blitz? Where does he like to blitz from? When you get in these type of areas of the field, these are the high-pressure tendencies. Like, these are the things where you start trying to understand the why of the, the play caller that you're about to play. So, after that, I would, you know, kind of have some me time when I would go home, love to watch um, some type of series. Uh, I was heavy into Game of Thrones, still heavy into Game of Thrones right now. Um, Vikings, Sopranos, Sopranos, Boardwalk Empire, uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, I mean, the classics. Like, I was – come on. Like, I got a whole plethora of – Yeah, I've seen Cam some shows, The Binge. He probably already seen it. I'm a binger. Don't don't send me no season where it's still in effect. Like, no, I want to watch from – Episode one to episode finish yeah. in a matter of three days. It's like I'm locked in that type of way. Uh, but during that, like I would watch certain things and I would get inspiration from that. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I would try to – shout out to, you know, Shane Collins. That was my first assistant. Shout out to uh, Fat. It was my Q! Assistant. Yeah. And, bro, I put – that's how they get they – like, bro, I put them through the – hey, I want to put this. Hey, I need to find a vest. Hey, I need an undershirt. Hey, I need a bow tie. I need options for this. I need lapel pin. I need a pocket square. Hey, no, 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 I don't even want to wear that. Hey, make sure I go get these type of jeans. Matter of fact, I'm having somebody send this to this P.O. box. Like, all these things that happen. There's so many things that happen behind the scenes that makes the scene better. Mm-hmm. So, all these different – hey, make sure – you know, Berto gets the address. Make sure it's Berto. a no sign. If it's a sign that, like, it's – it's a lot. Boy, we tell them, but them hats used to be coming. I mean, like <laughs> pancakes at AHA. I mean, every week, you know fresh I mean? hat. Coming with it. Yeah. Here we go, next clip. Look, look, look. Before we go, I got to ask this, and you can ask it again for me or whatever. But um, you said you've been shows. Are you, have you been House of Dragons? The, the, no, the about to. Oh! Ow! Oh! That's it. You know it drops. That's it. So you gonna watch it? I gotta go back and watch season one just so I can understand really what's that, going like on. House of Dragons. And then I'm about to lock in. Okay, okay. So you haven't watched House of Dragons yet? Not the second season. Right. And All y'all right. bastards better not say a motherfucking thing. All right. So next week you gonna be next week you gonna. You gonna have an update? Life? Man, it ain't gonna take me long to right. to lock in with that. Right. <laughs> Hold on. Did you did you watch it? I watched. it. Breland has oh! watched House of Dragons. Cam has it. Yeah. Don't tell nobody. Next yeah. episode. Say less. Looking forward to it. Okay, here we go. Main segment, Newton's Law. And so many times, Peggy, we always get so caught into the excitement of the new year. Mm-hmm. But this one is going to be something that I don't think a lot of shows remember to – point out what is that bro i really want to play big brother boo right now. okay big brother boo you feel big me brother almighty you know and this segment is for all incoming players all incoming rookies okay all incoming freshmen all incoming people to a uh, locker room mm-hmm. that you're the new person okay okay they'll call this boogie's bylaw all right, book is bylaws. Right? A note to all newcomers. So get your notebook out now. Get your pen and your paper. It could be freshmen. It could be rookies. It could be whatever. Mm-hmm. You the new guy. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So currently, Cam, the NFL's rookie transition program goes over these topics. All okay. right, every rookie has to go through this program. All right, it's a video introduction of the NFL and the league policies. All right, it's player player benefits and benefit resources, mm -hmm. player expectations, social responsibility for players, uh, maintaining strong mental health and fitness, um, introducing uh, the players to the culture, values, and history of the NFL and the players club, and last is the rule changes from college to pros. All right. Okay, go back real quick, Peggy, and I'm going to just keep it a buck. So there's a lot of people always ask this same question, like, what do they teach all these type of things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do, but that's not of prioritizing information at mm -hmm. that particular given point in time. Yeah. And I think the challenge is and will always be how can we give this information in a way that impacts the kids or the newcomers in a way that they can learn. And I don't know, but the NFL does their job. The PA does their job with giving the information and they'll probably say, bro, we tell y'all everything that you're going to do. You're just not in that mm -hmm. realm to, to listen. So yeah. go ahead. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on, even like this famous uh, Sports Illustrated art article, how and why athletes go broke, right? And so they have all the different things that leads up to it, the lavish okay. spending, Mm -hmm. Poor investment decisions, supporting family and friends, all right, short career span, lack of financial literacy, divorce and legal issues, taxes and medical expenses. So yeah. all of the reasons that you name are it these is ranked? A lot, huh? Are these ranked? It's just in order. I don't think they rank you know higher than you know, Okay, so let's just keep it a buck. From my experiences of mm -hmm. players, and this is not, when I say my experiences, this is nothing to do with me personally. This has everything to do with what I experienced or yeah. was exposed to. Yeah. Number one, lavish spending. Yes. There are a lot of players that live above their means. Mm -hmm. Just because you're in the NFL does not mean that you're a millionaire. Mm. Now, what should be number two, and it's not, should be taxes. Mm. Because they're going to give you that money. But this is what you don't understand. You know who that is knocking? Who that, bro? Uncle Sam. Damn. He going to go get his money, too. Got to get me me. Yeah, yeah, I seen you buy that Cybers truck. I seen that. I seen you post all the little manions and all them lavish vacations of you and your partners and your girlfriend. Yeah, that was cute. But yeah, you, I need it there. Going again. I know you got it. Yeah. I see this big at house. Ooh, it's nice too. You. Give me, man. All that money I already spent. Oh, don't worry about it. You gonna figure it out today. Cause I'm not no gonna I'm not gonna negotiate you. You gonna have to refund uh, something. No, nah, yeah, we're gonna have to come on. So taxes. Uh -huh. Uh poor investment decisions. Oh my goodness. That is a, absolutely true. Cause everybody got an idea now. Yes. And somebody want like let, let, let's talk about investments and let's talk about hedge funds and let's talk about these brilliant ass ideas. A lot of people, especially minorities, don't understand that people's ideas are always meant to use other people's money. Mm. They call it OPM. Other people's money. Mm -hmm. OPM. When you think about public companies, Elon Musk, for as brilliant as, and as great as the brilliance that he is, genius, he's used other people's money. Bill Gates, same thing. But for you thinking that, oh man, I'm about to invest into this company. Man, I just put $500,000 in. Ah oh, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a return on my, no, no. And I'm saying no because I fell victim to that shit too. So you have made some bad investments. Of course, but you don't know until you know. Mm -hmm. You also made some good ones. Of course I've made some great ones. You know what I'm saying? But that's the thing. Athletes must understand this. You have the ability to fuck up mm -hmm. and still recover. Mm. Sometimes the situation that you're in may cause you to be desperate and you can't recover from that. So you made a bad investment backed with a, you ain't paid your taxes. And then you still trying to live this lifestyle. 
where I heard some G shit, and it's from the documentary Broke. And I forgot the young man's name, but he said something. He said, you can live the rest of your life like a prince, very comfortable, understanding what it, everything you need, or you can live some of your life like a king. Mm. And I said, damn. Prince Harry, me, man. Bro, I'm trying to take, because my children respond, remind me of everything that I have, and I have a lot. I got foreign cars that are rusting. But at the time, in the impulse decision, I was like, man, I got to get that Yaris. I got to get that Wraith. I got to get that F-12. I got to get the Cybertruck. I got to get that. I got to get the Bentley. I got to get the Maybach. I need it. I need me, me. <laughs> but, bro. It's only one no, you driving. No, no, I can't, bro. I, shit is rotting mm -hmm. in my garage. Now, the flex is I could sell it. Low miles, cool, but I don't plan on selling shit. Now, why is that? Though? Because everything that I bought has a story to me. Mm. All right? It's emotional purchase. Yes, yes. These are things that I remember. Okay, I bought the Maybach when I first had my daughter, Sovereign Dior. And all my cars are mad at black, but that car is mad at white just because it was like a purity in me. Mm, I never knew why you kept that one the only one white. Yeah, it was, Man, that's it was, dope. It's like, First time for everything. It's that's, like pure. Inside yeah. white, everything white. That's my favorite car out of your car. Yeah. And I got a story behind every single one of them. But that's what my, that's how I remind myself about, okay, boom. That phase in your life. Yeah, that phase. That's what, that's what it is. So that don't mean I needed it though. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. those are silly investments, but I still have them. Mm -hmm. Now, when I go down this list, too, and I'm talking about supporters of family and friends, I will tell you this. Boogie bylaws, as we're going to get to this list, everybody needs to implement this person in their life. A no man. Elaborate, boo. Capital N. Capital O, mm -hmm. exclamation point, man. Okay. Peggy. What's up? You're my no man. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Hold on, listen. Right. You're my no man. All jokes aside. Okay, cool. N O, exclamation point, man. <laughs> Hello? Boog, what's good with you? What's up, bro? Hey, man, can you talk? Yeah, I can talk. What's good with you? What you got going on, man? I'm at training camp. You know what I'm saying? About to get ready for this other prep. Man, I hate to bother you right now, man, but, man, I need $5,000, bro. I'm behind on my bills. I get it right back to you. Oh, yeah, for sure? Okay, cool. Hey, listen, man, I'm about to give you my information to my, uh, to my manager or uh, my money market man. Uh, his name is Peggy or Omari, and boom, y'all y'all settle it out for yourself. Man, I really do appreciate you, bro. Yeah, 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 all is good, bro. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to holler at you. All right, bet. Boom. Do, 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 do. What you going to say, Peggy? No. Okay, say that. For sure, because they call my phone as for Your you. Your phone. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be you. Boom. Hello? Hey, is this Peggy? Yeah, this Peggy. Dang, you sound like a little bitch. But, <laughs> but uh, but hey. Come see me then. <laughs> Listen, uh, Cam told me to call you, man. He said uh, you can help me out with getting this $5,000. Oh, for real? Man, listen, bro. Uh, what you need it for? Oh, man, I'm behind on my bills. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, well, I don't think, looking at Cam's financial situation right now, I don't think he can get 5000 but he could probably give you, like, $500 uh, because he got a lot of things that's coming on, some that, that's very personal, and he don't have the time, effort, and energy to be focused on that. Obviously, we're getting prepared for a good season this year, man. But as you understand, man, he has a lot going on. He can't tell you, but I'm going to be the one that tell you, bro. Yeah. So I'll discuss with Cam. Can five hundred help? Ah, oh, man, I really need five thousand dollars, man. Yeah, but if it wasn't for Cam, how would you? How else would you? <laughs> how did you get back back here in the first? Place? You see what I'm saying? Like, hey, like, hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> Damn, dude, dude, dude. That's a good one. I know. <laughs> you know who my no man is? What? Pop. Yeah, that is true. For years. Yeah. And I just gave you free game. Yeah. It's not saying no. 
You're not slapping them with a no. You massaging them with a no. Mm. But the answer is still? No. Come on. With an exclamation point. But that's when I look at supporting family and friends. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Hey, you need $5,000? That's cool, bro. Hey, matter of fact, uh, you trying to work? Yeah. Hey, man, Cam needs his mom drove up from Charlotte to Carolina or Atlanta to Carolina. We need somebody to drive him. If you can drive her up all year, that go your five thousand dollars. Man, I ain't got no. Do 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 do. We gonna figure it out. Yeah. Everybody want the money, and they feel like they're obligated to your money. Yeah. And they always say, "Damn, bro, you done changed." Fuck no, I ain't changed. You changed. Mm-hmm. I'm still the same me. Mm-hmm. And it's sad because me being in my situation, everybody know I got money. Yeah. There's times where I've had a lot of cash on me. I just don't show it because I want to blend in in that particular moment. I don't want people to be looking at me for money. I don't want to be people to be looking at me as an opportunity. When you got the same amount of 24 hours, man, bro, but you know life just be life and bro. It's just 5,000. You just hit the bank for 72 million, bro. Lame ass nigga, bro. <laughs> I've been known you, nigga. You like it brand new, nigga. You like it brand new. Man, fuck. Like, oh, man, damn, just because I ain't want to give you $5,000 of money that you said you wanted to borrow, but I know I'm never going to get back. It back. And then $5,000 is going to keep adding up, adding up. Come on. I think I made my point. You today. made your point crystal clear. Say less. Here we go. So supporting family and friends, short career span. Short, short, uh, short career span goes back to lavish spending. Now, for the people who do come into the NFL, all right? And they witness a lot. Mm-hmm. Undrafted rookie walks into a locker room with an all-pro, a NFL top 10 player, whatever. They yeah. see how he's moving. They see how he's maneuvering his lifestyle. They see how he's posting shit. It looks good. It looks very enticing. Jay-Z said, all the money in one fight, all the pigeons take flight. No, no, no. Soon as the, all that money blows, all them pigeons take flight. Describing Michael, uh, Mike Tyson. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's so easy. It's so easy to love when you got money. Walking into a locker room where a lot of people have a lot, you feel like that. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Man, I just seen so and so pull up in that Maserati truck or that Cybers. I want one of them, bro. So I had to go. <laughs> but, bro. You're only making 120000 a year. Great money, but you can't afford this. And you done spent 40000 on your chain? On your number that was your college number? <laughs> you got number six in a damn Cuban link. Bling blowed out. But now in the NFL, your number 49. Come on, big dog. I hate to be the one to tell you, bro. But... <laughs> That's Let's reel it back in. No. Lavish spending and short career span. You ain't guaranteed to play. If you understand that you're an undrafted free agent, you're basically working at will basis. Mm-hmm. They going to give you that 10000 a week and you're going to be like, bro, I'm making money, which is still good money. But, bro, as soon as the preseason gets over, it's going to be somebody that they're going to refer to as the Grim Reaper, man. Mm. Typically, he's going to be a very small in stature, small in presence, Caucasian man. He's going to come and call you and say, hey, brr, can I speak to Amari Collins? Amari, this you? Oh, Peg. Yeah, man, what's going on, so-and-so? What's good with you? Hey, man, can you bring in uh, your playbook and your iPad and uh, meet me in coach's office? Yeah, 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 what time? Um, it's 12, 15 right now. Can you be here at about 1230? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, make sure you bring your pad, iPad, playbook, and uh, yeah, buddy. See you soon. Cool. Boom. Grim Reaper. Mm. They going to meet you at the damn door. <laughs> and be like, hold on, hold on, man. Let me go get something to eat. No, 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 no. Come on with me. Coach this is your last you. supper, brother. Yeah. So the coach got to come talk to you. Mm. How do I know this? Oh, did I, did I remind y'all? I got cut. Yeah. I would see it happen all the time. I said, oh, this shit get real. Ooh. Short attention span. 
two to potentially four years is your average NFL stint. But when you see these folks outside of the NFL locker room, they was that nigga. Mm. Or they was doing this. Or they got a helmet. They got a team ball. They got uh, person that was actually in there in them trenches, bro. You wasn't who you say you was, bro. And the ones who really like that, somebody else telling you that they was like that. They don't need nobody to show them their highlights of practice or in they the game. And they know who you are, bro. So while you're there, your short career span, understand that you're not here for a long time. Not for long. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Divorce and legal issues. She need to have, bro. <laughs> Men won't know unconditional love. Men will know transactional love. Your girl going to come to the game in the bedazzled jersey. Peggy's girl on the back. Yeah. Looking for her out there somewhere. What position you gonna play, Peg? Wide out. And she gonna have number seventy four on. Right now, please. That's my boo. Peg is boo. Peg or, is boo. Oh, Peg is Peg cookie. Is yeah, Peg is cookie. cookie. Yeah, uh huh. All these different things. She gonna look the part. She gonna have the Louboutins on. And this is another thing too, cause I'm gonna tell y'all this. There's a such thing as classism in the NFL, and you gotta understand how to act, sisters that come from the cloth of support, okay? It's, it's like the big dogs. Mm -hmm. Who's been on the team the longest gives the women the longest, like, tenure. The, the longest tenured chick has, like, she's the madam. She get the most. She the cool. madam. Let me show you how we do it around here. She done been there for 10 years. You come here for two or couple weeks and you walking in on your Christian Louboutin bedazzled shirt crop top you new to the crew I'm out here supporting my free agent he said he gonna practice today big boobs BBL Syringe hips. Do it for Look, uh, but but hear me out. What's up? Don't do that. Mm. This, look, you want to go under the radar as much as possible. Mm. And even though I'm using humor to tell and describe this situation, understand this, sister. If you don't know how to move, look around. Look around. Baby, this is not about you. If you're going to support your husband or your boyfriend, your fiance at training camp, do not try to stick out. Do not try to wear the, the most extravagant, most expensive shit because everybody got money. Don't try to have your ass showing. It's, it's, it's honest, but it's, it's true. You gotta have this respect. Because I'm going to tell you, going back to that discussion of camp eyes, everybody's looking, but nobody's talking. Who the fuck is that in the black right now? <laughs> yeah, with the crop top, chewing all that damn gun. With that fat ass. Like, she yeah. stacking the back. Yeah, yeah, she thicker than doggone cold oatmeal. Who is that? Oh, that's so-and-so girl. The rookie? <laughs> she don't know no better. Guys, <laughs> let me tell you something. What? But everybody who comes into these situations, they just feel that they got to be soft. No, ho, ho, ho. Because we're going to get to Boogie's bylaws, and I'm just going through this list. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm giving you free game because somebody has to tell you this. Baby, it ain't about how shiny your damn car is or how shiny your shoes is. Is the person that you're supporting, is he doing his motherfucking job? We both going to be out of one. So I'm trying to tell you. You're trying to shine like a queen and a king. Y'all need to be just 
staying under the radar like princesses and princes. Divorce, legal issues, taxes, medical expenses. Medical expenses, the the team covers all that shit, so that shouldn't even be on that. But understand this. What's up? (laughs) Protect yourself. Well, let's do, you so, to. so for folks understanding, like, oh, why I gotta sign a prenup? If that, like, no, baby, look, we're not gonna make that about this, and this is not the discussion. It's kind of talk about that. But I'm trying to tell you, you know me, I know you. Mm-hmm. You know how to make me mad. I know how to make you mad, and we're gonna come to an understanding of who gonna win because I know what makes you mad. I can't hit you. I don't want to hit you. But I'm going to hit them pockets because I know that's what you care about. We're going to hit them pockets <laughs> like Jose, Jose Canseco juiced up. We're going to hit them like them pockets. Sammy Sosa, man. Mark McGuire, man. We're going to hit them pockets because I know that's what you care about. Yeah, Ask from the person that loves you or yeah. you had love for. You're going to bury bonds the pockets, bud. Barry bonds that bill folder. <laughs> there we go. Let's go. Down, so. Now that I got your undivided attention, Pickett, I know we've been taking a long time to get to this point. Because this is what I'm waiting on. The Boogie Bylaws. The Boogie Bylaws. R.S. Follows. I got five of them. Okay. And we can cre- we could have created ten of them. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, rookie, newcomer, freshman, all over. These are five things you need to understand as you're going into a new phase of your life. Okay. Rule number one. All right. Shut the fuck up and work. Okay. I had to say it like that. How you say it? Shut the fuck up Uh and work. All right. Nobody cares who you once were. I don't care how you was drafted, how high you was, if you was drafted at all. I don't care how you was recruited. I don't care you was the number one player. I don't give a damn, bro. Look around. All them folks left. You may ask yourself. Who who left, boy? All the people who gave a fuck about you being a five-star recruit, the first pick of the draft, and all that shit, motherfucker. Because all this shit is equal right now. Yeah. Nobody gives a damn. Come into this locker room ready to prove yourself to this team and lose your ego. We don't give a damn. Bro, man, we used to, man, we, my high school to kill your high school. Nigga, we is. We getting ready for university of whatever training camp. What the fuck are we still talking about high school for? Yeah. We at the same high school. You went to a 1A school, I went to a 5A school. Cool. Guess what? We in the same locker room. Facts. Motherfucker, you was drafted number one. I was, wasn't drafted at all, but guess what? We in the same motherfucking uh, locker room. Got the same jersey. We, in a, we, we locker mates. Damn. Yeah. Mm. Different numbers. Yeah. So please, homeboy, shut the fuck up and come in here ready to work. Understand that you must understand proving your value to the team and losing your ego is what is at its utmost importance. Rule number two. Find you a great vet and learn from them. Mm. And this can happen indirectly or this can happen directly. What do you mean by that, Boog? I am saying this. The vet that did not know that I was learning from him, and he probably still doesn't know this, but the cat is out the hat now. Ryan Khalil. Hmm. How much older is Ryan than you? Ryan was four years older than me. Okay. But I studied him. I looked at him every single day. The way he ate, the way his attitude was going into the team meetings. When did he come into the team meetings? What is what did he complain about on the field? Did he do treatment? Was he a good guy? Was he a family guy? Did he take notes? Did he bring a notebook in? Was he one of the guys that was just too big or or, or, or too caught up into him being all pro, a pro bowler. All these type of things I paid attention to. And I would think you would look at another quarterback no. or somebody like that. And it may happen that way. Because yeah. I had a, a great example of that, Derek Anderson. Mm-hmm. A person who was from Oregon, Portland, Oregon. 
or some part of Oregon, I don't fucking know, but everybody knows DA to be this free spirit of a guy. Yeah. He walked around the damn facilities barefoot. <laughs> Good guy. I mean, bro, he knew his shit. Yeah. He knew his shit. And the thing that I respected about D.A. was that he always, I never could beat him to work. Mm. And boy, when I started beating him to work, that's when my career took off. Because mm. it was a competitive thing. He drove a fucking white Range Rover. And I knew it was his because he had an Oregon license plate. And every time I tried to beat him to work every day. And when I started beating him to work, that's when my career took off. Mm. I had to find things to do. That's why when people would see me on the treadmill, it wasn't. It was like, bro, I in my mind, I got to get to work before DA. DA never knew this. And I didn't start beating him to work until at, like around my fifth year. <laughs> and But that's the thing. That's he would just up. find things to do. But he would show up and people knew DA's here. Yeah. Whether he was getting treatment, ice tub, cold tub, rehab, getting extra cardio, going over the game plan, there all these different things. I learned directly from DA, indirectly from Ryan Khalil. Yeah. And it could be different players. As my career kind of took on other things, there were other players that I would be so fond of, of how they will prepare and how they will be inside the locker room. Luke Keekley was an unbelievable teammate. Unbelievable. I would look in, you know, when he wasn't there, he would leave his uh, notebook sometimes, and I would just go through his notebook just to see. I just wanted to see. Like, yeah. I, I wanted to see how he prepared because I was so curious to know how he processed information. I would <laughs> literally, like, I remember this time where I was about to leave. It was like about 7 o'clock. Practice usually ends around 3 o'clock. Right, so it's about seven, eight o'clock, and I'm walking out, and you know, I just open because you can't really tell if anybody's in there yeah. because it's just one or two people in there. I would always open up the linebacker room to see if Luke was there. This particular time, I seen Luke in there, and I went back into my room and I found something to do. Mm. So. These things, I, I, I just could not allow a person to outwork me. And I guarantee you this, any competitor knows, I'm pretty sure Luke did the same thing with me. Mm. It, was a, it was a healthy competition. It wasn't envy that was just like, why the fuck Luke is fucking Hall of Fame type. I seen this motherfucker work. I seen his preparation. He, oh, he, he's deserving of everything that he gets. Yeah. So I looked at him. We didn't play the same position, and we wasn't on the same team for the most part of the time we enjoyed each other because we went against each other every day practice, at practice. Yeah. But he helped me become a better player. Rule number three, you're only a rookie once. Enjoy it and learn as much as you possibly can. What I mean by that? What's up, bro? Hey, rookie. Man, going to get the blessed – Bless the room with Krispy Kreme donuts every Friday. It ain't for you to just be like, man, who the fuck y'all? <laughs> nah. Because the real ones know. <laughs> who the fuck is he talking to? <laughs> Motherfucker, we said go get some Krispy Kreme donuts. Matter of fact, we want you to go get your Krispy Kreme donuts and Dunkin' Donuts. You don't need that many goddamn donuts. You don't. But that's, it's, it's a respect, respect thing. thing. Yeah. The people who are shit veterans are shit rookies. Yeah. And I hated to see this transition from this player because he was a shit rookie. And then the next year, he wanted the rookies to do everything that he didn't do. It don't work like that. He yeah. wasn't in the league too long. <laughs> yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, I did. The guys saying. who not buy in, but yeah, the guys who buy in to becoming a rookie, like, damn, bro. It is what it is. This is. This is my respect to the team. What y'all boys need, man. All we asking you from you rookies, just make sure all our snacks is always, you know what I'm saying, loaded, man. You know, Big Boy, he like them hot Cheetos. Big Frank, man, he like sunflower seeds. Motherfucking Jaquez, man, he like the motherfucking Slim Jims. Yeah. 
the it ones matters. who are great rookies end up being they it's, they gotta understand it's levels to this shit. Yeah. See what I'm saying? And you're only a rookie once. Mm. Number four, control your environment. Do not allow personal life to bleed into professional life. Mm. I will say this again. Control your environment. Do not allow your personal environment to bleed into your per your professional environment. That's like family, all of that? All that. All that. Because when the shit get bigger than the rabbit, what you gotta do? You gotta kill the rabbit. You gotta bro. kill the rabbit. Got to. Gotta kill the rabbit. This could be your girlfriend. This could be your mama. This could be your brother. This could be your sister. This could be your best friend. This could be your new friend. This could be your agent. This could be your whatever. Yeah. Keep that personal. That's personal. When I'm on this field, don't nobody call me with that bullshit. Yeah. I don't. If it's not an emergency, man, that shit gonna have to wait yeah. to after the season. That's real. Because I'm here to get to my next contract. And as soon as I'm drafted, that next day, they're trying to find my replacement. Mm. Simple. Yeah. Number five, last but not least, vets aren't expecting you to get it. Okay. And that can be the team too. The team is not expecting you to get it. They're just expecting you to care. And they're just expecting you to give a fuck. Mm. Don't be one of those guys that come into the meeting like, man, fuck this shit, man. I, I slept late, man. Like, yeah, what it is. No, nigga, what the fuck? What? Nah. This is the same. I'm depending on you to get this call. Yeah. I'm depending on you to make sure like, hey, bro, versus this site. Is, hey, hey, right there. Hey, Tutu, we already talked about this. I'm giving you a signal. You don't understand the signal because you bullshitting. Yeah. You worried about these hoes. You worried about buying this new shit. You worried about your jewelry. You worried about your outfit. You worried about going to the mall. You worried about going to the hookah bar. You worried about going to Miami. You worried about going to New York. You worried about everything other than getting your fucking nose into this fucking playbook and asking the proper questions in the meeting room. Because everybody typically asks a question. Anybody got any questions? Before they end it. Everybody looking around and you one of them dudes that... Uh, All right, Panthers on three, one, two, three, Panthers. Okay, cool. You leave and you go like, oh, shit. Don't even know what you're doing. <sighs> what we just went up? No, nah, bro. Yeah. Them type of dudes don't last. Mm. There's two type of athletes in an NFL locker room. What you got? There's football players mm -hmm. and there's professional football players. And they stick out like a sore thumb. And what's the difference between that? You'll see them. Football players, they just say they play football. Professionals, they're here to not only play football, but to enrich their craft. They're the ones that's early to practice, to warm their bodies up. They're the ones that's coming to meetings with pen and paper and asking the proper questions. They're the ones that stand after the go over and watching film before the film even starts. They're the ones that's well equipped, treating their bodies like machines that it is, not putting unleaded gas in a diesel engine. Yeah. Doing any and everything. You got 12 hours to dedicate to yourself. That's how I looked at it. It was like, yo, if I'm coming here at 5 a.m., I can't leave until 5 p.m. Mm. And even if I leave, if I look in that damn locker room and that linebacker a meeting room and I see Luke Keekly, I'm still staying. That's just the oath that I made to myself. He didn't need to know that. And nobody else needed to know that. But that's what I did. Yeah. No, you're not going to outwork me. No. And why I'm coming in at 5 a.m. is because of this. I knew how I played the game. I knew I needed to be in tip-top shape. That's the only time I had to get cardio in. Mm. I don't really get all that cardio in in practice because we have to do mechanic things. We have to go with the running backs. Then we have to go make the line checks for protections with the linemen. Then we have to go do routes first error. And then we have 707. And then from that, we're going over the plays that we're going over in team – like all these different things you don't have time to be running up and down the field and doing all this that's on your own time yeah. be a professional but just the football players they only show up when it's time to do football things that's real so those type of things where how you look at this thing is it's five five different things from the boogies bylaws shut the fuck up and work yeah find a good vet and learn from them mm -hmm. you're only a rookie once enjoy it control your environment do not let personal life bleed into your professional life vets aren't expecting you to get it they're just expecting you to care and to give a fuck. 
right there, bro. If you go in there with that type of mentality, ladies and gentlemen, I can't guarantee success. I can't do that. But what I can do is tell you, if you don't abide by some of those rules, I can guarantee you, I can guarantee failure. Mm. I can't guarantee you success. But I guarantee you go into that locker room saying, but shit, bro. Yeah, I like that motherfucker. That, that presidential fuck out. I just got that bitch. That bitch sexy. Man, nobody give a fuck about that shit. I got four of them bitches in my motherfucking house right now collecting dust. Come on, rookie, tighten up and catch the motherfucking ball. Yeah. It's third down day to day. It's red zone day to day. Lock in. Yeah. Okay, they bringing zero coverage. Even though breaking the huddle, you had a corner route, zero coverage, automatic. When you hear a kill, kill, kill sign, that – Corner converts to a post. But you ain't know that shit because you were sleeping. Trying to post all the motherfucking shit on your watch and shit. You got girl problems at home. Your mama keep calling the damn facility trying to look for you because of all this bullshit. I got, take care of your business, Take bro. care of your business. Are Do you, you get me, Peg? Man, I get you in your crystal clear book. You done broke it down for them boogie bylaws, mm. man. Appreciate you. Yeah. So, I mean, that's real shit, man. And I just know that a lot of guys not going to have the same opportunity as a lot of guys. That's true. Come on now. That's true. Man, they ain't never really want to fuck with me, though, bro. You are labeled a camp body. Mm -hmm. Until proven otherwise. And these are SEC reception leaders. These are all-time sack leaders at your college and this, that, and the third and I was a fifth round pick this year, and that, that don't mean shit. You ain't getting the job done. Yeah, your attitude sucks. You gonna see that Grim Reaper? Yeah. Hey, make sure you bring your uh, your iPad and your playbook, and they gonna give you in return a five gallon trash bag. And you gotta fill it up. Either you gonna put it in there, or we gonna start from one side of the damn locker, and we gonna swipe. All that shit into this Damn. little black bag. It's, it's, it's hard, but it's fair. It's hard, but it is. And with that being said, man, as we close things out here at 4th and 1, oh. make sure you like, okay. make sure you share, make sure you comment, but most of all, pick it, make sure you do that. Subscribe, dog. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you comment, but most of all, what should you do? Subscribe, dog. So, oh, and Peggy, yeah, how yeah, can yeah, I but... forget? Catch us August 16th. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, fourth and one to the Big Apple. Yeah, come on now. We're going live now. We live, <laughs> baby. <laughs> uh, we walking up that bow leg and acting <laughs> like skin. <laughs> August 16th, 6 p.m. We're going to bless the stage with Peggy. Yeah, man, what? What's good, boo? What is going on? But the energy is up. Yes, sir. And I'm going to tell Breland. You know a Breland around here? Uh, I know a guy named Breland. So say that. So I'm going to tell Breland to make sure he bring the juice too. Oh, yeah. Because we got to get everybody we in. We got to get a pop. You know what I'm saying? Don't get oh, scared. Don't nah. get scared. Nah. Don't be stumbling, fumbling over the way. You know what I'm nah. saying? You know how to act. Yeah. You know what words you got to alter and okay. couldn't pay. Alter, alter. But that don't mean you can't act like it. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, no. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you comment. But most of all, Peggy, what should they do? <laughs> Subscribe now. Man, appreciate it. I know we went a little longer, but I just needed to put people on. But Lord Jesus, it's good content for the masses and real shit for your asses on. on this fourth and one platform. All right now. And as I always say, before we end things on finger, uh -huh. the finger, the pinky, the finger, the finger, the pinky, one thumb, all together, one love. You dig? And that's a wrap. <laughs>